Switch it over to the podcast. Woo. What's up, guys? We're uh, our, oh, what, 11th episode. Sorry, I need to rearrange all my windows Switch now. Podcast. <laughs> oh, shit. What's up? Episode yeah, 11, son. Yeah, definitely. Um, of Go Time. Finally have a name for it. But it's going to be our weekly video game um, news, kind of uh, keep you in the know podcast. Uh, we cover video games that we like and just everything about them, the news, just everything. But that's kind of the rundown of our show. Um, usually we start out with our, oh, well, let me, I'm going to introduce myself, I guess. Um, I'm Matt or a 16 bit bear, usually on most platforms. Uh, this week with me is Ryan. Um, what, what, what is all your stuff, Ryan? Oh, hello there. Um, so you can find me on mostly on Xbox, uh, Sprecken Z Dick. I do have, uh, probably the worst PlayStation network name as well. Um, Sprecken D's nuts. You can take my wife for that one. It's so great. She she dared me. She's like, just do it. I'm like, okay. And then me being an idiot and not reading up on things. Oh, you can't change your PSN name. So that's cool. <laughs> so I will forever be Sprecking D's Nuts on uh, on PlayStation. Nice. Um, but yeah, mostly you can find me there. And you can find me on Twitter as well. So uh, it's good to be here, though. Glad to be back. Yeah, it was nice to have you back. Oh, God, I'm screwing everything up over here. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I was... I'm so, like, I don't know, I just, I haven't, usually uh, Jason's, he's taking care of the streaming side of it, and I'm just here, so I have to get everything set up. Um, right. But in, yeah. Rest in, rest in peace, uh, Jason's back. Yeah, he's dead now. Yeah, <laughs> it was a good run for him. But okay, so let's start out with our new releases, I guess. Let's just jump right in. Um, Do it. There's not a lot of stuff this week, unless I just totally missed it. Um, but yeah, so first we had uh, Elix, which we all have been playing. Um, well, me and Jason have, I don't know. Have you checked out Elix at all? Dude, I haven't had a chance yet. I got to play it at E3. Um, I really liked it and just saw you guys streaming it for a while. Um, I, I really like the mix of just the RPG action and also kind of like fantasy plus sci-fi all mixed together. Yeah. So, um, I, I mean, I think technically there's some glitches here and there, some issues, but I like story and lore. It, it was like right up my alley. Yeah. So, um, really glad you guys are checking that out. It looks yeah, awesome. Yeah, definitely. Jason uh, Klutz, he's going to be reviewing it. So we'll look for his review shortly. Maybe yeah, yeah. Um, if his back's okay, maybe he'll get to it quicker. <laughs> but yeah, um, I really liked the game a lot. I, I was I liked it more than I thought I was going to. Because um, after my first play session, I played for that first night for, like, for a few good hours. Like I think it was like six or seven hours. And uh, usually games don't hold my attention that long. Usually I'm kind of like play two hours. Like I've been playing Shadows of uh, War um, like on and off. Like I'll play like for like 10 minutes and then I jump out. And like I go do a mission and I jump out. Like that's kind of how I play you know, most games. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that really held my attention, you know, for a good seven, eight hours. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. It is very, like, buggy, but we were also playing with um, a pre-released version. So I'm not sure if they have... Oh, God, sorry. If they have a... What's it? Day one patch or anything like that. I I haven't checked it out, so... Right. Yeah, I haven't read anything yet, but I mean, I'm sure it will. It's like when you have a game that big, you know patch is coming at some point in time to help fix some things that may not have been caught. So um, that would be nice when they do release that. Yeah, and definitely. Seeing some, seeing some of the early reviews out, I mean, that was the biggest thing was just technical glitches here and there um, that made it challenging to play. But it's definitely another good one. Yeah, so. definitely check it out. And it's also a budget title. It's only 50 bucks, So it's definitely yeah. worth time. It's come from a really good publisher. Uh, I, I'm a huge just like fan of THQ Nordic and what they're doing lately yeah, with the games they're publishing. God, excuse me. Um, but yeah, sorry. Elix came out on the 17th, so it uh, came out Tuesday and uh, mm-hmm. came out for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. And then um, for all you uh, Switch fans, you can finally play NBA 2K18 if you want the physical version. Um, you can get it now. It was in store before digitally, but now you can get it physically on the 17th as well. Right. Um, right. This is one that you added in here. Uh, I didn't see this, but I took your word for it. Uh, Rogue Trooper Redux. Yeah, so um, it, it came out, it might have been just in Europe right now, um, but it's at least in some markets. It's okay. Out. No, I saw so, it in my Xbox store when I was messing around earlier. I just, I never heard of the game, so I didn't Oh, yeah, catch so it. it's just, re- it's, it's a, a, a HD remake of Rogue Trooper. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's we like the guys at Rebellion. I think they're, they're awesome guys, so. Oh, Rogue would, Trooper, that's. Like, yeah, it's a Rebellion title. Does it play like Sniper Elite, or what is it? Uh, so it's so it's it's basically kind of like a cover shooter in a way. Okay. Um, with some other elements thrown in there. Um, it, it it's based on a oh, and I'm 
having a brain fart. 2080 comic line. Um, so yeah, just based on some uh, comics and graphic novels. Uh, just it's 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 pretty cool. So I play just a little bit, um, but it's 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 fun. I I, I like awesome. it so far. Yeah, it's on PS4 and Xbox One now. Was it on PC before, or is it not coming to PC? Not that I know of. Okay. Unless that comes later, I believe Switch. It's going to come out on Switch as well. Nice, nice. Um, another game I've been jumping into. Um, you can even say elbow deep into. <laughs> uh, no, South Park: The Fractured Butthole. Um, I was playing that. I've been playing that a lot. That's on on the seventeenth. It came out for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Um, no word on a Switch release, which I'm really, really wondering about because I think it'd be perfect fit for the Switch. Obviously, I think everything would be a perfect fit for the Switch, but oh, yeah. that one in particular, especially with Ubisoft really backing the Switch, I'm surprised to see that didn't come to Switch. But I'm also, I know that they had you know delays and delays and delays. I thought personally is because they were porting it to Switch and they wanted to have it day and date with the Switch version, um, mm-hmm. but it's out now. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I played about two, three hours of it. Um, really, really like the new combat system, how it's uh, the grid based system, and I really oh, like the cool. superhero stuff where you know it's 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 a lot of fun. Um, it's really easy to change your class on the fly and whatnot. It's it's definitely worth it. Um, nice. I think Ubisoft's a great publisher and a great development studio, so definitely that's. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that's just where I come from with that. Hopefully yeah. I can jump in. I'm, I really hope I can pick it up sometime soon. I'm just, there's so many titles coming up now. and Oh, that's, <laughs> I totally. I'll get to it eventually. I'll get to it eventually. I totally agree with you. Like today I was like, I was, I, I tweeted out. I was like, man, I don't know what to play. I don't know what to play. I, I don't even know if I put, I don't think I put South Park on that list. And then I was cleaning up my TV room and I, I got South Park physically. And I grabbed the, like the, grabbed the case to put it on the shelf. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to play this. Like, I know I'm not going to play this until next year <laughs> because with everything coming out next week, like I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to fucking play Assassin's Creed so hard. I guess we'll talk about that later, but like, oh, I'm yeah. so pumped for that. Like, I know I'm going to be consumed by that and Mario and other stuff that like, I'm not going to get around to being able to play South Park. And these right. South Park games, they're not like normal show games where they're, they're goofy and they're fun. Like. They're deep, deep games. They're very long games. Like, the first one, I, I, I don't even know how far I was, but I played that game for, like, 20 hours, and there was still more to go. So, Oh, yeah. I don't know. It's 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 fun. I'm definitely, I definitely recommend South Park. Um, and then another game, which I know nothing about, but uh, WWE 2K18. <laughs> that came out on That's the 17th right. for PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Um, uh, oh, did yeah. it come off the Switch? <laughs> yeah, supposedly it's out. I'm pretty sure it's on the Switch. Okay, okay. Um, let me double check that. Say what you were going to say. Oh, no. So, I mean, it's every year. They come out with a new wrestling game every year. They have, you know, 50 million wrestlers, old and new, in there. Um, you know, you, you have different you know, career modes, but mostly I think it's about the multiplayer. Just, you know, friends getting together and beating the crap out of each other with uh, chairs. Um, I mean, it's no, and you know, WCW versus NWO for uh, Nintendo 64. That game was yeah, that game is awesome. legit. And Kurt Aroni knows exactly what I'm talking about if he's still in chat. But um, also, I, I lied. Just... WWE's not on Switch. Like, oh, not, yeah. yet, not yet. Not <laughs> yet. Not yet. I must have read that wrong. But you know what? Honestly, like I, I swear, all these games are eventually going to get to Switch. I mean, they're you know yeah. all that third party support now. It's it's eventually going to go there. So, but um, yeah, I mean, I played 2K17 and it was okay. Um, the, you know, just the controls were for me just a little bit more complicated than i wanted for a wrestling game yeah (laughs) um i I just want simple things where i just you know hit a couple buttons do some finishing moves you know jump off the top rope little things like that um but um oh uh real deal says hey what's up real deal um so you can also roam around the backstage and i think you can talk to like wrestlers and start like like promos and stuff with them right yeah and you can like do like this like you can like be like the company man or you can be like for the fans and like there's like different branching paths and stuff and it it yeah. sounds neat my problem is uh i got wwe 2k like 16 or 17 the one with steve austin on the front i oh, got that right. for free when it was like i think there was like a pricing error or xbox or they were giving away for free or some shit right, but i played right. it and the gameplay was so bad that i couldn't believe like it, it i was like this is the only wrestling game out there almost I believe it might be the only WWE. Yeah, it's the only licensed wrestling game out there. Right. Yeah, the only one. And it's right it was so the gameplay was so awful. I couldn't believe it. I was like, I don't even want to play this casually. I don't even want to jump in and just fuck around in this. It was just it's so bad. Like, so it kind of turned me off from those games to actually spend money on them. But uh, right, right. What's that one wrestling game? Do you know that one wrestling? It's that like simulation wrestling. Um, it came out for the. It looks like it came out in like 1992. Oh gosh! Oh, I don't know. Pro wrestling superstar is that? No, that's not it. 
Total Extreme Wrestling, I think it's called on Steam. No, that's not, that's not it. Total, total Extreme, brother. God, I don't know. There's this one, it's goofy looking. It, it came out for the Switch a while ago, but that game looks cool too. Fire yeah. Pro Wrestling, that's what it is. I want to check oh, that game out okay. just because how like goofy it looks, but uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Hit us up if, if you guys, if, if I don't even know who makes that game, but like, give me a code. I'll fucking, I'll tell everybody's <laughs> awesome. So no, um, but then another game that I really don't care about, but we got to talk about it cause it's, it's cool. I guess I'm on the 18th grand Turismo sport came out for PS4. Yeah. I am yeah. not a car guy. Yeah. Like, and I, I know people who are car guys have been waiting for this game for years, you know, cause they love grand Turismo. Yeah. Um, I'm really, really surprised because I was like, when I was making this list, I was like, Oh shit, grand Turismo's out. Like, I don't. I don't think that's a good sign. Like, if someone like me who's like casually into you know racing fan, like, or like knows people who are racing, like, I don't hear anybody talking about Gran Turismo Sport um, for PS4. Right. So right. I, I don't know if that's a good sign. I don't know if that's a bad sign. But that's out now. If you didn't know, because like, I didn't yeah. fucking know. So. Um, <laughs> yeah. Last the last racing game I played was uh, Forza Horizon Three, and I basically got it so I could do the Hot Wheels tracks. So. I, I yeah. I, I was playing on that like three four days ago. I bought those because they were on sale. <laughs> It, right, right. It was on sale. I'm like, okay, I'll totally go for it. And, you know, it, I like the arcade ones, but, yeah. I don't know, super serious car racing games I'm just terrible at, so I, I usually avoid those. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how uh, Gran Turismo compares to Forza. The last Gran Turismo I played was for PS1. Um, I just, it was like, the, I think it was like the big thing because it like, it was the PS1, I think it was PS1, I'm pretty sure, that uh -huh. you, because I got my PS1 and it came with a Gran Turismo and I you had to like, you could play it without the analog stick. I think it was. I could be totally wrong. This is like, like a hundred years ago. So like I don't know. <laughs> but like I just remember like I was like, man, this game was really fun. And like there was this race where you had to go around the track like two hundred and thirty times. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I'm never gonna beat this. And I remember like we would like pause the game, we'd go eat dinner. I'd have my cousin play. Like it was just like we would just like we finally completed the race, and we we're like, oh my god. And like I don't even remember what you got for it or why we did it, but yes, I don't know. It was it was cool. Um, next game coming out is uh, coming out on the 19th, so I believe that is today. It came out uh, for PC. Yes. It's called Bomber Crew. Bomber Crew. So Bomber Crew is from Curve Digital, and it's basically like a survival simulation on a bomber um, airplane. So yeah. you got to have the right crew with you, um, fixing the plane, drop, you know, just doing you know strategy stuff. Um, it, it looked cool. At least the trailer did. Yeah, it looks really um, cool uh, to me. I mean, I checked it out because I didn't hear about it before, but I, I picked it. Yeah. I looked it up, and I didn't know it was made by the people who made the Flame and the Flood. Yes. Correct. So like that, that. I mean, they're a great. I like them as a studio, so I'm definitely gonna That's check right. that game out. Well, um, we got it. We got it. We got a code for it. So just sweet. I don't gotta wait around for that. I mean, maybe so I'll still it's... buy it, but like, uh, right, right. <laughs> definitely oh, check um, it out real, first. Like, real quick, uh, Ken Java, thank you for the two bits that you shared, dude. Appreciate. Yeah, it. Yeah, that's my dad. I'm trying to teach him oh, how to nice. try to teach him how to, to to farm bits and stuff. Is oh, there we go. Tell him about it. Yeah, no. at first I looked at that, I'm like, what the hell is a bit? But he okay, cheered yeah, too. Don't... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No shit. Yeah, I don't have the bit stuff set up. Oh, fuck, dude, I was so unprepared for this. You're fine. You're don't even worry about it. No, that. Jason needs to be ashamed of his back. Mm -hmm. That's that's the time problem. For a, time for a metal back, Jason. Yeah, just become a robot. Yep. Um, so then also today for PC, <laughs> PS4, and Xbox One, the second episode of Life is Strange Before the Storm. Yes, um, correct. Yeah, how just excited are you about this? I mean, I I have the first Life is Strange downloaded. I need to play it. I've wanted to play it, heard amazing things about it. So um haven't done before in the storm yet. Um, but I mean, I'm hearing good things about it. Yeah, I hear great things so, about it. It makes me want to go back and play Life is Strange, but yeah, it's hard. It's real hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to me, it's just, I, it's I, it's hard to play a game that's based on like that like high school, you know, like kind of vibe. And it's like, man, they <laughs> this is so goofy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It says hella a lot, right? Yeah, that's exactly. Good. They say yeah. some goofy stuff in it, and like. <laughs> I thought the teacher wanted to bang the student. I was like, is this going to be like dark and weird? And people were like, no, it's like Ooh. supernatural. And I was like, well, it's not the vibe I was getting at all from this game. Like, <laughs> that was not what I thought was going to happen. You're like, you're like, that's not what I heard. That's not the vibe. I was I like, get. damn it. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, but, uh, and then uh, the next game, it's actually coming out tomorrow uh, or tonight, I guess, depending on where you live. Don't oh. Knock Twice. It's uh, coming out on the 20th. It's for PS4 and PSVR. Okay. I know nothing about it. Um, I me neither. Yeah, the next game pick on the up, list, uh, 3DS and Switch. Well, you might have to pick it up because there's no PSVR games out there. So yeah, if you have yeah, a PS4, right. you might have to justify your purchase. Oh, um, don't worry. More are coming, though. Don't, more are coming. Just, yeah. Just 
I supposedly, I don't know. I think I don't know. We could, maybe we could talk about VR. That might be our topic because I could talk about hours about that. But <laughs> Fire Emblem Warriors comes out tomorrow. Uh, I know a lot of you yes. Nintendo dorks are excited about that. 3DS and Switch. Um, I'm yeah, a big I, Dynasty Warriors guy. Okay. I never got into the Zelda or Fire Emblem. That they, like those warrior games just don't interest me at all. But right, right. I don't yeah, know. I've never. I've never gotten to them either, um, but I just I know there are there is that crowd that loves it. I know someone who's just dying to pick this up tomorrow. So I mean the the the, the fans are out there for it. Um, I just I thought it was just weird Sorry, having that sense. release right before Mario. So yeah, that that was odd. That's okay. But it's, it's oh, okay, nice. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Nintendo; they can do what they want, basically. Yeah, no, it's I don't know. I'm I'm excited to see like how it pans out. I was a little weird, like, why is it on 3DS and Switch? Like, make it a Switch exclusive and make people buy a Switch. Like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't like Nintendo's, uh, like how they're holding on to the past and they want to keep the 3DS going. Like, I just want them to take it out back and shoot it. But that's just how I feel. Um, <laughs> the next game coming out <laughs> tomorrow: P- PC, PS4, Xbox One, Real Farm. This looks like a okay farming simulator ripoff. Um, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> which is better or worse. Uh, it looks literally identical to Farming Simulator. When I was watching some gameplay, I was like, oh, this is Farming Simulator. No, it's, okay, yeah. it's real farm. It's a, um, different. Okay. Yeah, All right. whatever, if you like that stuff. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm super pumped for uh, Farming Simulator on the Switch because yes. like, that's definitely where I can see people playing Farming Simulator. That's right. I don't, I don't have a Cub shirt on. It's a Coca-Cola shirt, you dumbass. God. <laughs> Jesus, Dad. <laughs> Fuck. Giving you crap in the chat. <laughs> no, no. Did the Cubs lose though? Do you know anything? You, I don't. You wouldn't know. Oh yeah, the they lost. Oh okay, you would know. Okay, yeah. I didn't know if you'd yeah, know. Yeah, they lost. I was like, my my team wasn't in the playoffs. We were even close to the playoffs. Who's so. your Who's your Who's your team? Oh, Oakland A's. Oakland A's. Okay. Yeah. No. No. They're 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 a ways away. They're, it's you know, the playoffs are a pipe dream. Okay. But um, no, no. I appreciate any game that um is real, not a simulator. So obviously. Yeah, this one's obviously game, better because it's, it's obviously better. It's real. For, it it would be great if you bought it and it was just like a bag of like seeds and there's like oh they. Thirty dollar bag of seeds, like there's real farming for you. That's right. Go find go out. The instructions on the back of it. Go find dirt. Go find dirt. Plant it. Water it. Oh man. Yes. And then well, this game, uh, the next one that also comes out tomorrow, the Inner World, the Last Wind Monk. Yeah, um, I've never heard of that. What never that heard mean? of it. I looked at it. The art is super, super pretty. It looks like it's kind of like a point and click adventure type game. Um. I don't, I'm not sure it looks really cool. It looks like one of those games that's, like, it kind of is in, like, the Cuphead style where it's got that old kind of art look, but... Oh, okay. I, I don't know. It, it's It looks cool, but I, awesome. I know nothing about awesome. it, so I don't know. But it's coming out for everything, PS4, PC, and Xbox One. Nice. Um, so if you're interested in that, definitely check that out. Very cool. But, Very yeah. cool. But so that's everything well, that came out or is coming out. Well, what have you been actually doing? What have you been playing? What have you been wasting time? Uh, I I've just playing. <laughs> wasting time is a very good word. Yeah. Um, so uh, just on our little script that we have for our podcast, I put freaking Cuphead in those exact words. Um, I love Cuphead to death, but oh, it is so frustrating, so frustrating. But it's so fun. Yeah. So I've I've just been I've just been playing that a lot. Um, I've been playing Lego Ninjago with my sons. Okay. Yeah, buddy. It's good stuff. It's it's really short, but um, the combat's really good in there. So the, the kids have been enjoying it. I've been enjoying playing it with them. Um, and then just yeah, not as much as I want to, but Destiny 2. I've mm-hmm. been trying to play a little bit. I just, I really want to jump into the raid, but I still have a lot of grinding Ooh. i got to do. Yeah. Um, it's unfortunately. But you know what? It's it's interesting, at least in my opinion, with Destiny 2. The grinding is not as bad as, as it, if I felt it was worse in the, in, destiny one um so i think you're right though with, yeah i think you're right you know it's still a grind so it's kind of like that uh you know you just kind of shrug a little bit but um honestly like it they, they've made just enough improvements i think where i do want to jump in there and farm to get some better gear so i can get in the raid and things like that so yeah that's what i've been playing so what what's your what's your light level at on destiny where are you sitting oh, at right now oh i'm only i think i'm 225 so i got a ways to go 225 yeah yeah i mean i think i think the minimum light you can be for the raid is 260 but 
you know, a lot of people that I follow on Twitter and social media are like, you got to get up to like 285, 290. Yeah. Um, and even then it's, you, you gotta be well prepared for, <laughs> yeah, definitely. for the raid. <laughs> um, but I mean, so I got a little bit of ways to go, but, um, and it just kind of sucks because more great games are coming out. I'll probably get distracted. And that's my, oh, my, that's kind of my plan with destiny is I, I mean, I've kind of fallen off. I haven't played destiny at all this week and I, I really want to, um, but yeah, I'm sitting at 300. I'm actually 301, depending on what weapon I put on, but the weapon that gets me to 301, I don't like, so I, I'm usually sitting oh, at 300. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. but and real deal is about the same. Yeah. Cause... That's what I'm saying. And that, that's what I'm saying. That's where the grind happens because like you, 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 you get like four or five gear drops a week, you know, for the power. Cause how you level up, I mean, I'm not sure you might know, I'm not trying to like talk down mm-hmm. to you or anything, oh, no, no, but no, no. every week, you know, if you open, you know, the map, it says like, this gives you powerful gear. That gear is always going to make your light level go up. So yeah. you do those things to make your light level go up. The problem is for one, it's RNG. So you do it and you could get something you won't use. Yeah. Or it's like, okay, do the raid. Well, I, I'm not, I can't do the raid. I don't have the time to do the raid for one. I don't have people to do the raid. So that's a gear drop I'm going to miss out on. Okay. If I don't play yeah. enough, if I don't play enough, uh, PVP, I'm going to miss out on that. Like, and I'm not trying to whine and say it should be given to me. I'm just saying like, what happens is the end game isn't the end game is time locked almost. It's, it's gated by time because you only wow. have five drops a week. Whereas in like, in like, I know a lot of MMOs are like this, but like, I remember world of Warcraft, you would go, you would farm like heroic dungeons. You would get emblems you would turn in for new gear and you you could do that you could just sit there for 17 hours and play you know if you wanted yep. to whereas right. this like this is like oh you get four drops a week there you go hopefully you get what you want and right and then you got to wait for the reset yeah, yeah. and it's, it's just yeah. it's super like it's super frustrating um it's it kind of has turned me off of destiny because the end game is very lacking but yeah, I'm hopefully going to get back to it. That's kind of like what you were saying is like, I think like with all this new stuff coming out, I'm not going to worry about destiny. And when that, uh, o- Osiris expansion comes out in the fall, right, boom, right. it'll be super easy to get gear. Cause all that old stuff will be welfare and you'll be able to get super, you know, you'll be able to get 350 or whatever, super fast. Exactly. So that's kind of my plan exactly. for destiny is just play it very casually. Um, yeah. and then also I'm going to go off on a little tangent. I was really, really pissed off how they did iron banner. Because Ooh, okay. Iron Banner pissed me the hell. I do not like PvP for one at all. Right. <laughs> it's 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 just Idiot. annoying. Like, and it's not that I'm like super awful at it. It's just like I when you do the math, like to get the ten packages you need for for the season one event or whatever, you would have yeah. to lose a hundred matches or win forty matches. And it's like forty matches. Like that's if I'm if I win every. Oh my god. And it's like gotcha. Okay. It's super annoying and. The, the the boxes to to get the fucking cool outfit they showed on Twitter, it's all RNG. So I get I get three chess pieces in a row. Three chess pieces in a row. I don't want another damn chess piece. I want the full set. Oh, it was just so annoying, dude. I was getting so pissed. I played for like four hours one night with my buddy. He came up and he literally carried me. This dude is like so good at this game. But he just carried me. Just I just backpacked him the whole time. And it's like, right. I, I got like two packages that night. And I'm like, we played for like four hours, dude. Like... Uh, and it, and the thing is, it's not yeah. even good gear. It's just cosmetic gear. And it's like, Activision, let me just hand you $100 for this gear. I swear to God right now. Like, I got my credit card in hand. I'm so pissed off. <laughs> just do the like, Fortnite model. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah, seriously. It's just, like, so annoying. But I don't know. Anyway, so what have no, I been I, playing this week? Yeah, or what? Yeah, where are you going to go with oh, that? I'll just say I agree. I mean, I haven't even touched Iron Banner because I hate PvP. Well, it's fucking gone uh, now. You can't yeah, even well, do yeah. it anymore. That's true. Oh, only one, one time, week. Time. One week. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I'm so... <laughs> <laughs> Whew, season one was one damn week. Mm. Ooh. See, okay. Wh- no, when when Iron Banner was for Destiny One, wasn't it longer than a week? It, it may. Like it was longer. I don't know because I didn't play Destiny One Iron Banner at all. Because for one, oh. I suck at I suck at PvP, and Iron Banner was like, hey, it doesn't it doesn't like level the playing field. That was the cool thing about Iron Banner is like you go in with a better weapon, and this guy doesn't have that weapon. You're doing more damage. Where yeah. as Iron Banner and Destiny Two, they're just like, hey, it's just control basically like oh. which was kind of lame to a lot of hardcore pvpers but like i said i'm not into yeah. pvp so i was like hey it's fine for me like but i don't know Answer but yeah it could have been one we could, yeah if chad if you know i didn't play destiny one pvp hardly at all um That's right so if you know let us know because i would love to know and in real <laughs> tell us what you play on do you play xbox or ps4 uh he's xbox is the Xbox too? Ooh. Yeah. We could get like a fire team going and play. We can actually get a fire team yeah. going. You guys can help me level up. Definitely. Yeah. No, I'm down to farm. Like, I'm down to do stuff, but I just, 
I don't know. I don't know. We got to find no, time no. to do stuff. It, that's the thing. Finding time. And then I, I just know that if I get into a raid, I'm going to have to wait or like save like three hours or more. Of that's my, my time. problem. Like, and I can't oh, do that. Man. Like, I can't mm-hmm. sit down three. Like, I can't be like, like, you know, we both got, we not together, but we have kids. Like, yes, <laughs> like we have, you know, Matthew, family and we shit. Like, kids. we can't just be like, hey, uh, just don't talk to me for five hours you know what i mean like just don't just you can't interact with me and i'm gonna hog the tv room and i'm gonna be screaming at people That's and like right you know you just can't do that and like and especially like when do i set up this time do i set it up during the middle of the day and right. then like, you know it's just it's so awkward i don't know rating's hard rating has always been hard i just missed like when i was like a punk ass kid in high school and i could just stay up on weekends and fucking raid on world of warcraft or whatever seriously you know but, yeah. and, and we and we both you know for for the audience in case you don't know us we both have young kids so yeah. you know if they were teenagers i mean they'd be on their phone away from parents anyway because you know teenagers hate their parents yeah so then it'd be fine and easy but not young kids man they want to hang out with you they no and like you got wife you. you have to talk to her and you gotta, right? you gotta, you gotta feed her and them. stuff uh, like it's like jesus man like no my goodness. Fuck with who does that <laughs> But so, what, what I've been trying to play this week over all that stuff. Oh, she just throws, her, throws something at you. Like, uh, yeah, seriously, Damn. just on the camera, just wipe right in the head. <laughs> so, I've been playing a lot of Battle Chasers lately. Um, okay. I, I fucking love Battle Chasers. Literally, uh, it's probably my game of the year right now. For, oh, wow. for as much as I've played. It's, it's the perfect mis- mix of, like, old school Final Fantasy, but, like, updated. It's, it's so good. And it upsets me that it's not on Switch yet because I want to play it everywhere. <laughs> I want to be playing the game while I'm walking around my house, while I'm feeding my daughter. I want to be playing while I'm pooping. I want to be playing all the time. Like, not even lying. Like, I just want to be playing the game all the fucking time. It's so good. And, like, that's my biggest gripe about the game is, like, it's not... For one, we have a PC code, um, and I have to use a controller because the PC controls are fucking garbage. Ooh, it's just okay. awful on PC. Like, it, it's just horrible. Um... And then I'm so what I'm doing is I actually I got a laptop the other day and I've been playing on my laptop and like so I'll always just be like have my laptop open at the dinner table and just like playing with my controllers like oh yeah what's up what are we doing like but I'm just trying to get battle chasing it but it's a lot of fun I uh, I'm gonna get a review up sooner or later um unfortunately like it's not gonna be sooner it's probably gonna be later but uh, I'm working on that right now but um work, yeah playing ton of that it's a lot of fun and then I'm also been playing Shadow of War a little bit like I said I've been jumping in yeah. and out uh, Shadow War is a lot good. of fun. Um, have you? Are you interested in Shadow War? Are you playing it at all? Or are you interested? Not? Okay. Interested. It's just there's. I've been playing other stuff, and it's good. It's definitely on my list. Yeah. Um. I'll be. I. I. I have a feeling I'm buying so many games on Black Friday because I know they're going to be at some kind of discount. Yeah. And I'm going to be broke after that, but I'm going to be picking up some of these games that I don't have right now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of the same of you know from. Uh, from the first one. Okay. Yeah, Shadow of Mordor. Mm-hmm. It, not not in a bad way. I mean, that game was one of my favorite games. Like that was literally probably my game of the year that year it came out. I, I played that game wow. for twenty four hours straight. The first one, um, hundred percent completed it, and I, I loved that game. Okay, but mm-hmm. it's so it's not bad. And the, the the stuff they add is you know the cool like the battle systems and and the dominating. I mean, they had the domination stuff before, but just the new intricacies and stuff. It's really cool. I do have a little bit of gripe with the game just because it for some reason doesn't seem to be catching my attention. I think the game is very, like, the story is just, it's like, I have no idea what the fuck's going on, and they don't take time to explain it to you. And I I don't know, maybe if they just rushed the story a little bit, or what was going on, but, like, I felt like we had a purpose in the first game, and this this game just, this story just, I I don't know. Maybe I'm not far enough into it yet, it's just not catching me yet. Well, and when you have a Lord of the Rings game, you want that lore. You exactly. want the story. And I mean, you get stories, uh, just a ton of story, just in the books from the movies. I mean, and you, that's the thing. I'm a huge Lord of the Rings nerd, so like, it's just it's a little weird. Like when they're like talking about like these things, and I'm like, and like I, I haven't read like the Cimmerillion yet. Like I, I've been wanting to work on that, but that book is so heavy that I'm just like, <laughs> shit. Like I'll stick with Lord of the Rings for now. But there I, I go, love Lord of the Rings, but like some of the shit, I'm just like that doesn't really add up in my head. Like, and then when I think about this logically, I'm like. How did Sauron have like an army and he had to fight this dude and this dude defeated him, but he still managed to get an art. Like I just get all this like tied up and stuff, but the game's fun. I played it in a lot of short bursts kind of back to the game is I played oh, like okay. short bursts. I played like 10, 15 minutes. I do, you know, I do a, of, uh, what is it? The vendetta or whatever. I go kill somebody who killed somebody online and I, you know, oh, I'll, I'll, Oh, I'll wow, do, you know, this, okay. I'll do that. I, you know, I'm having a lot of fun with the game. Um, I will say I do have a, like kind of a big gripe and the kind of bitch about it. The Xbox Gold Editions, 
Uh, some of them were fucked up, and they didn't come with a season pass. They oh, came no. with a digital copy of the game. <laughs> so, <laughs> whoops. Yeah, I was super pissed. I got the game, and what pissed me off is I on Tuesday night I found this out. Or Tuesday yeah. morning, I found this out. I contacted WB. I contacted yep. Microsoft. I've been blasting them on Twitter for like until Thursday. I, I had a support ticket since Wednesday with WB support. Did not even get an automated response oh. until Monday. Oh, and I was no. like, nope, fuck it. I already returned the game on Sunday, dude. I was fucking done. Because, I mean, Dang I basically it. got a free copy of the game. You know what I mean? Like, right. But I didn't get this shit I paid $100 for, you know? So, like, yeah. I was kind of pissed off. Um. I don't know what was going on at WB. I, I understand they just launched a game, but that is like absolutely ridiculous to have that long of a support ticket and have no, not even right. automated response of like, we'll get back to you. Their shit on Twitter, no help. It, it was just ridiculous. Like, yeah. um, I, I, I I love Monolith, but I don't know. I understand like WB is publishing it, so right, it's kind of on their end what happened with the game. Monolith, I know probably couldn't fucking fix that power problem, but it, it just kind of disgusted me. Like with the the attitude they had about it. Like they, they honestly didn't respond. They didn't make a statement about it. And this shit was on like the right. Reddit, you know, there was like, there's like 15 other people with this problem. And like, if there's 15 people on Reddit, you know, you got to multiply that because like not everybody's on Reddit. So like there are other right. people having this problem, so they should yeah, probably yeah. address it, but they yeah, didn't. And remember, that's, I, I don't remember seeing anything from them. Uh, addressing yeah. it. I'm like, you know, okay, if this happens, turn it, exchange it or, you know, contact us. Here's a key that they'll email you in like one to two weeks. Yeah. Or something like that. I Nothing. don't know. So I got a free $60 game. Basically oh. Microsoft, Microsoft will probably watch this and revoke it or whatever, whatever. Like then I probably <laughs> won't ever play shadow war again, but yeah. <laughs> um, so I've been playing that a little bit, but then what has really consumed me lately, um, I received my Kickstarter backing of kingdom death monsters. It's a board game. Um, it's, fucking dark and scary and crazy and you, you hunt giant monsters with giant fucking dicks for hands and shit it's it's fucking weird but like yeah like it's just it's crazy like it's weird it's weird yeah just look it up and look at some of the art and you're like that's fucking weird that's weird yeah, but uh yeah. it's a great board game it's basically it mixes because like you go out on these hunts and you hunt these giant monsters and you get resources and you go back and you build your settlement and you have kids and you have to like you know deal with like all this shit and like hunger and all this. It's just, it's like basically, it's just like one of the most, it's basically a video game in a box. You know what I mean? Like it just, it has so many moving parts and it's a lot of fun. And the cool thing about it, it's a really big board game, but it's not extremely difficult to learn. Yeah. Um. So I, I just been loving it. Me and my wife have been playing it like nonstop. Like every, like we'll get the kids down for a nap and we'll go like try to, you know, get shit done or we'll be like, Oh, okay. Like the kids are asleep. Let's go, you know, try to get a hunt and a settlement phase done or whatever. It's a <laughs> lot of fun. That's but, cool. uh, yeah, so I've been playing that like all the time. So like, that's kind of, that's why I've kind of been falling short on the video game side of stuff. But then I also played South Park when it came out uh, for about four hours and I already nice. talked about that a little bit, but yeah. Nice, but so that's nice. what we've been playing. So what are you excited for? What are you upcoming or oh. I mean, stuff that's already out, but what are you looking forward to? Well, we, we talked a little bit about Elix already. We talked yeah. about South Park already, but another one that I'm really excited about besides Mario Odyssey, because I mean, that's a given. We're yeah. all excited about it. Um, Wolfenstein 2 is it just looks incredible and i mean we're going to talk about this in a little bit when we get to the news stories but the the social media team is like the killing it time. yeah they're, they're just killing it with their little like 10 second snippets oh my god oh it's pissing off so many people but it's so good um so i'm really excited about that um what about what about you yeah so uh obvi i'm obviously like you said excited for mario that that's a given yeah. I, I i honestly thought about maybe not even putting it on here but I don't know. It's I, I honestly forgot it was coming out so soon. <laughs> I was like, "Oh shit, Mario's next week!" Like, yes. okay. Um, and then the I'm only, also, yeah. yeah what were we saying? Oh, just the only reason I knew that is just I remember when they announced it, um, the release date, and I'm just like, "Wait a minute, we got two other major, huge games releasing on that day. Yeah. It's gonna be a crazy Friday next." I week do want to jump insane. back to Wolfenstein. What you're talking about. Oh, yeah. I'll be honest, I didn't know Wolfenstein was coming out. And I, I, this is kind of about Bethesda's review policy where they don't send out advanced copies anymore. And Correct. I right. didn't. I forgot Kill, uh, fuck, Evil Within 2 was coming out. I didn't yes. even know Wolfenstein was like following the next week. I honestly, I mean, I probably would have picked up Wolfenstein if there would have been some coverage behind it. I probably, I definitely would have picked up Evil Within 2 because I love scary games. Like, but... Right. There was no coverage, so that in turn makes me as a consumer be like, I don't know, man. Maybe I should wait. You know what I mean? Because like, I I don't know. I think this is just my personal opinion. I don't I, I don't have any figures or any 
backing behind this. Yeah. I'm worried that this no advanced copy, no advanced review shit is going to hurt Bethesda in the long run sales wise. But maybe, yeah, maybe what I they're think. seeing. Sorry, yeah, where, yeah, go where. I'm just saying. I I, th- I would agree with that. Um, I mean, I get. I guess I get. You know what? No, I don't even know why they're doing it. Um, I know that uh, the thing that pissed me off the most was not their policy, but but like some of the other media companies out there that was just like, "Well, fine then," and just like poo pooing all over it. It's yeah. Just like, dude, guys, it's a free game. Get over yourselves. But yeah, it does leave a bad taste in your mouth because just not only video games but movies um, and you know television things like that. When there's no advanced copies, that's always been a sign that something's up. Either it's bad or it's not ready or something like that. So it, them having this policy, um, it, it, it does become worrisome, um, especially with Bethesda's, um, I guess, it, their history as yeah. well. If you think about their history and all the buggy games exactly. that they release. Um, so when you think about that, and it's just like, okay, this is not a great look. Um, but I agree with you with, with Evil Within. Like, I remember when it was coming out, but I don't remember seeing trailers or anything really to hype it. Um, at least not like with Wolfenstein. I mean, I guess maybe because I follow certain people on Twitter, I get the, the trailers and stuff. Yeah. So they're kind of hyping it, but with Evil Within, I don't remember really seeing a whole lot. And it's, I mean, come on, it's October, it's Halloween season. Like he, You got to hype up that game. There was a story I saw. I, I don't think I grabbed it, so I'm just going to throw it in here. It is mm-hmm. the best-selling horror game since Silent Hill 2, which, I mean, oh, it's saying really? a lot. So, I mean, that that's great. I mean, that that means it's sold better than Resident Evil 7. Um, nice. Which is surprising to me, just because, like, like I said, I mean, maybe this is falling on deaf ears, and maybe, you know, I'm totally in the wrong here, but... I didn't know anything about it. Like I, I totally forgot it was coming out. I, I, you know, I was like, Oh shit, the game's out. Like, cause I was at GameStop for a midnight. I can't remember what else came out that night. Um, shit. What was I at GameStop for? I don't know. But they were like, Oh, are you yeah. picking this up too? And I was like, I didn't even know it was coming out. Like totally forgot. Like, <laughs> but yeah, so kind of, instead of getting sidetracked. Yeah. So I'm super, super pumped for Assassin's Creed. Um, yes. I honestly think Assassin's Creed is going to, is going to devour Mario for me at least. Um, I know Mario is supposedly getting perfect scores, but I'm a huge Assassin's Creed fan. Um, I haven't played one since Assassin's Creed, the one that wasn't crap, but the the one before that, Black Flag, because I didn't play Syndicate. Oh, okay. Um, I tried to play Syndicate. I know I've said this a few times, but I didn't like how the guy ran. He ran and he did his arms like he was like on a bike. I don't know. He just did it weird. <laughs> and I was like, I can't, I can't, can't like, enjoy. and his shoes, he wore these boots and the tongues were like open. And I was like, those things would fucking fall off, dude. Like, I can't watch you run like this. And then, yeah. And then my sister played it, and she's like, you know you could have just switched to the girl, right? And I was like, I didn't fucking know that. Like, I probably would have liked that better, but... Yeah, the guy's kind of the brute, and the girl's more the Yeah, he ran, he was just like, and I was like, what are you doing, dude? Your shoes are going to fall off. Like, that was like my my thought the whole time. I was like, you're going to trip. Oh, my God. But yeah, this one... You you need to be part of the quality control crew, and just, you could be like the safety coordinator. Yeah, well, it's just like like, one of those things uh, I'm just like... are not safe. It's such a stupid thing, but like, that really kills it for me. I'm just like, ah, something weird like that I just can't, I can't handle, like... I know it's dumb, but uh, no, this new one with uh, Bayek, I like. I like that. I really, really like that's taking place in Egypt. Um, yeah. I like that they're you know moving towards that a little bit more. I really would love to see one like Africa with like African tribes and shit. I think that'd be really cool. That would be cool. But uh, yeah, I cool. love how this like the origin of the brother or the origin of the Assassin's Creed and all this that's stuff. Right. And you know, I mean, obviously it's called Assassin's Creed Origin. I feel stupid for even saying that, but like, I don't know. But, and well, then you all never the know. yeah, you never know. and then all the post launch content. Um, I I don't know if you've seen, but like. They're having so much stuff come out like after like they're gonna support this game like it's an MMO like it's a live service game and it's a single yeah. player like game. So mm-hmm. I mean there may be multiplayer. I, I I know they used to have multiplayer in Assassin's Creed. I actually haven't heard anything if they're gonna do the multiplayer, um in this one which I love the right. fucking multiplayer in Assassin's Creed. But uh, it could be fun. It, it was be so really fun. My biggest thing and I I always talked about people. That, I always like preached this when I was at GameStop uh, when I was trying to sell people on Assassin's Creed multiplayer is like. It was the most innovated multiplayer that I've played in years. You know what I mean? Like it was. It wasn't just like yeah. team deathmatch, go kill everybody. Like it was just so cool. But yeah, I'm super pumped for Assassins. Um, I was hoping to God Ubisoft would hit us up and like give us like an advanced key to start playing and streaming and reviewing it. But <laughs> I, I think it's been well, it's been about two weeks and I don't think they've said anything back. So well, and 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 just so you know, um, for Ubisoft, you have to be on their press website and that's yeah. where you request games. Yeah, no, so, I'm, yeah, that's what I. I, I, I did. I did go ahead and put in a request for you guys. So, oh shit! Okay. Yeah, um, I mean, that's we'll why. see what happens. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, we've gotten a couple games from them, so it's just yeah, just dance. Play. 
Okay, yeah, just oh, and uh, Star Trek VR. Hello. We got oh Star shit, VR. yeah. But so, after with Assassin's Creed, like, I mean, another reason I'm so pumped for Assassins is because just the week after that, I believe, um, the Xbox One X comes out. Oh, and I've decided yes. I'm getting an Xbox One X. I'm just like, Are I'm going to fucking it? do it. Like, I'm just going to jump in. Um, I, I wanted to so bad, and just the money's too tight right now. Yeah. So I had, to can- I, had, I had a pre-order, and then I canceled the pre-order. Shit. Um, no, where did I you know. have it pre-ordered from? Oh, from Amazon. Did you have, the, like, the Scorpio edition? I did. You should un-pre-order it. <laughs> and give it to me, and I'll give you the money because I fucking want that Scorpio edition. Oh my god! Can you unpreorder? I don't it? know. Like, oh, I'm so mad now. Well, and just you know, honestly, the the little Project Scorpio is so small on yeah. the Xbox X. Like, I mean, you could probably paint it on yourself and just feel yeah. real good about it. Just put a little sticker. And, but yeah, um, right now I'm torn between yeah. if I trade in my Xbox One S, um, or if I just keep because it, it only gets like 140 from GameStop. Correct. And like I have the money set aside for the X, so it's not like I mean it'd be nice because I'm like oh that's an extra 140 bucks I have in my pocket now, but it's like right. when it comes down to a 500 dollars system like what's 140 dollars and if I could have like another Xbox it might be cool, but then it's like what do I need another Xbox for like I don't I don't know like yeah it's it's gonna be only really if like if you have friends over and multiplayer I guess exactly I mean obviously it's all gonna be cross compatible like you could play games on the X and yeah connected to the, the S and all that stuff. So um, that would be really the only reason to do it. Yeah. Um, unless you like just the, you know, I mean, I do love my one S so I love um, how, yeah, it looks so that's my problem. Like I really like yeah. the white systems. Oh yeah. Like, they look so good. Like, it's but... sleek, dude. It's super sleek. And that's another thing. I'm so worried. I'm going to buy this fucking thing. And then in like two months, we're going to be like, here's a, a bright ass yellow one. Because Matt loves yeah. yellow, and I'm just gonna be like, God <laughs> damn it, Xbox! Like, I'll just be so mad because like that's, that's what right. always freaking happens to me. Like, I just get so it's like that's why I, I honestly I hate buying Nintendo consoles now because I know they're gonna have like some special edition Pokemon one come out oh, that yeah. I'm gonna want. Like, oh yeah, can you imagine? Just imagine this for a second, and yeah. blow your mind for a okay. second. So imagine with Microsoft doing the design lab for the controllers. Oh my god. Can you imagine them doing that for a console itself? Jesus. I mean I oh. I can't because I think the logistics behind that would just be way too much. It, like it would be tough. It would be tough, but oh my word, if they did that, I would The design lab controllers do are they upcharged? Are they more expensive? They're a little bit more expensive. I okay. mean, it, it, especially you can get it etched. You can get like a certain gloss on it. So you can put your gamer tag on there if you wanted okay. to. Um, so it comes out to roughly, I want to say 80 bucks Ooh, to do one. So about 20 or $30 more than a, than a, okay. a normal controller. But I mean, regular controllers come out are pretty much on sale like almost every other week. Yeah. So um, one day I will get a design controller. I missed out on the E3 one. Just the line was too long. Um, but I wanted to get one of those E3 ones because nice. it just would have been so cool to have. Um, but I mean, it's it's a great idea, um, you know. And just whatever. Remember, the controllers that you have will work for the Xbox One X, so yeah, you don't need any like special controller or anything like that. But I want that I mean, Pro controller. I, yeah. Have you played with the Pro controller at all? I did once, actually, when I tried out Strange Brigade. Um, okay. They had it on the Pro controller. I mean, it felt real nice i i'm not gonna lie um i don't know if i would spend the money for it but yeah just being able to map you know certain controls to certain buttons and just have that customized you know just have it be so um customized it's it's really cool it's a cool option no problem so. okay well let's yeah let's jump into the news because that, that was a lot of oh, a lot of stuff there's only pack. a few stories this week <laughs> yeah i mean there's honestly it was it, we usually have about two pages of news stories we yeah. only have about a page here but i think these are a lot more meatier than what we normally have correct correct um, yeah some of the topics that have been going on this week has been um pretty eye-opening pretty depressing in a way um but i mean we'll get to it we'll get to all these stories yeah first. definitely i mean some of them are a little there's just a lot to unpack with them is oh, you know the yeah. first story i guess we'll jump right in this is the big one that came out this week that uh, ea has shut down visceral studios these are the guys uh, who are working on the Amy Amy Hennig uh, Star Wars game, the one that was shown at E3 where you walk out of the cantina and it looked fucking beautiful and yes, it, it was did. crazy and uh, man, yeah, it looks, it looks so good and I just it's it's such a bummer. I mean, you know, I I, I can't imagine being a developer um, is an easy job. 
um, just because of the turnover, the high expectations, just the visceral stuff that you get <laughs> from um, social media and things like yeah. that. I mean, just just nuts being a developer. But I mean, that was their livelihood. There was a lot of people that lost their jobs, um, which is we just it's a sucky situation. Um, and it does make it worse when a studio like Visceral, you know, who made the Dead Space games. Yeah. Um, it, it's just a shame. Like, and I guess kudos to some of the other major developers who were just you know telling you know just putting it out there on social media that there are job openings for like ubisoft and uh oh who are some uh, epic games was hiring i mean there's a bunch of people that were like posting job opportunities um but still that's like you know expensive to move a family from one location to the other so yeah i mean just, definitely. A, just a sucky situation and i'm really hoping ea is is, is you know gonna take care of these developers because i mean th this yeah. has been a rough this development of this particular game has been rough um I would assume it's rough because it's been in four years of development and I'm going to pull up this, tw uh, this quote from EA. Um, it's, they said the, so basically what they said, it said in its, own, in its current form, it was shaping up to be a story-based linear, linear adventure game throughout the development process. We've been testing the game concept with players, listening to feedback about what and how they want to play and closely tracking fundamental shifts in the marketplace. It has become clear that to deliver an experience that players will want to come back to and enjoy for a long time to come, we need to pivot this design. So, that being said, that fucking set the internet on fire. Because everybody's yes, like, it, it means, it, oh, they were making a game with no loot boxes. That's what, oh, that's why they closed it. Well, that pissed a lot of people off. For one, that's not how I take that fucking quote at all, but that's how people took it. But luckily, Jason Schreier, who, uh, you know, God bless him, um, he was, he got a hold of some, you know, unnamed people. He talked to some people at Visceral, and... So from what he's been told and from what he talked to, it wasn't about uh, it being a single player game that they couldn't monetize yeah. or anything like that. Um, right. it, it was because, and this is a direct quote from Jason Schreier, because investors didn't like hearing the project was, and his quote, a mess. Um, so basically what it sounded like is mismanagement. And it's really sad because like Amy Hennig sounds awesome and, and the stuff, yeah. you know, she made all these like, you know, the uncharted stuff. And I mean, not all of it, but you know, she was, she was a game lead on a lot or a director, a co-director, I think, believe on uncharted two and maybe three, maybe I'm getting those mixed up anyway. Right, right, right. I think, I think co-director. I, I mean, right. but yeah, cause I, I think she left on during uncharted's four development because of kind of the same reason. And it's kind of sad. Like, I'm not trying to say this, but it seems what, what this kind of shows is maybe Amy Hennig can't be a lead. You know, that, and that's why, again, I'm not personally saying that. This is just what some people are seeing is like, it's kind of shaky. You know what I mean? Because if you come right. off that and you then you go to another project and it gets closed down, it's like, man, that, that's kind of sad. I don't personally think that's what what happened. I don't think she fucking ran into the ground or anything. No, um, no, no. Because like, she's, I mean, she's pretty super talented. Yeah, she's dude. super I fucking mean, talented. Definitely. I honestly, you know, it probably was just mismanagement because since EA is such a big company, there was probably lots of hoops to jump through and whatnot. Oh yeah, stockholders and all. Yeah, I I do agree with the comment though that I mean, I don't want to play a a single player linear. I don't want to play Uncharted in the Star Wars universe. I really don't. I want to oh, play my Uncharted. I, I want to play. <laughs> I mean, I would have liked it. I would have fucking loved it. It's Star Wars, dude. Right, you could, right. Yeah, you could slap Star Wars on fucking anything, and I'm going to fucking love it and play it. But, like, give me knights. You know what I mean? Give me yeah. a, a good role playing game. Give me a fucking good MMO. Like, not an MMO. Like, I don't think they should make an MMO. But, like, I want to play a good Star Wars game where I can be the fucking, you know, character. Like, I don't want to play somebody else's story. If you have a great story to tell, that's fine. Like, I want to see that. Uh, I'm super pumped for Star Wars Battlefront 2 because of the single player. I'm not going to touch yes. the fucking multiplayer with a 10-foot pole. No. But, like, no. the single player story, the, the fucking, the, the writers behind it, uh, it the, everything about it, uh, the actress, I can't remember her name. Uh, she's been promoting it really well. Uh, she yeah. was on one of the, uh, I think I believe she was on a Game Over Greggy show uh, over at Kind of Funny, and she talked to them for a little bit, and I mean, she seems like a really cool person, but like, regardless, the game's story seems cool, and like, that's why I'm buying that game, and that's what I want out of that game. But when I hear Visceral Studios is making, you know, this awesome game, and you know, it has a lead from one of the Uncharted's and blah, 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 I want something like open world almost, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe let me play like Witcher in space, you know what I mean? Like... Let me be a bounty hunter. Let me be Han Solo and fly around. But I don't want to play a linear game. Like, I don't want to play a go to point A to point B to point C. Like, 
I want to play something that I can I can free roam. I want to be immersed in the Star Wars universe. I don't want to be just told a story. I'd, you know, I'd, I'd rather read a Star Wars book or something like that. But that's just my take yeah. on it. I, I don't know. Yeah. I think that we're going to get a lot of details later on. Because, yeah. I mean, the bottom line is, if the game was a mess, could they have rerouted, you know, the help and the developers, switched up the team, and kept the game as it was? I mean, they shut down the entire studio. So something's up where they shut down the entire thing. I mean, they could have just said, hey, we ha- we want fresh eyes on this project. We're going to give it to EA Vancouver. Which and they this are doing, gonna, yeah, Which they are doing, yeah. Um, and then we're going to work on something else. But they shut down the entire studio. So I think a lot of details are eventually going to be spilling out. And we're really going to see when the game is finally released, when they're promoting the game, as you know, they'll promote the crap out of it. We're going to really see some of these details of how, yes, it was a linear focus game. It's supposed to be funny and little details that popped up here and there. How how are they going to change the game when the final product comes out? I mean, is it going to look completely different? I mean, most likely. Um, Abysmal Zombies asked, you know, maybe the studio has not been performing at EA standards. And that could definitely be it. Um, you know, and yeah, maybe it wasn't the game itself. Maybe it's just they were not doing what they're supposed to. Maybe they weren't ma- making deadlines. Yeah, maybe making deadlines. And I mean, EA is a corporation. They, they. Yeah. I, I hate to say it, but game making is it's an art form, but it's also a business. And if you yeah. are, you know, in the red on every time they look at the spreadsheets, and it's like, hey, we can just hand this off to EA. Uh, it's fuck, not EA. Yeah, it is EA Vancouver, right? Yep, yeah, yeah, right. That's right. Um, I was gonna say Ubisoft Vancouver, like that'd be totally fucked up. But like, <laughs> um, no, but they hand it over to EA Vancouver, and like, hey, they they need to work on something, and we also don't know who is moving. Maybe 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 ninety percent of the team is moving to you know to that studio. Maybe they're like, right. hey, uh, we're, we're closing Visceral because we're going to close this location and we're going to reroute you guys over to, you know, uh, the Vancouver studio. We don't know that yet. Um, So, yeah. I mean, it's still a developing story and stuff. I don't think – the thing is, though, when these decisions are made, it's never – I don't want to say it's never because uh, if you read Jason Schreier's book, Blood, Sweat, and Pixels, Star Wars 1313 sounded like it, it should have been a great game. But oh, it's never yeah. that the game is so fucking good and they're just like, oh, we just got to shut it down. Like, there's – always something else going on so it's either you know money it is either mismanagement if it it doesn't matter how good of a game you're making and how good the prototype and the, and the build you have is if you're costing them 30 million dollars let's say a fucking day i mean that's astronomical that wouldn't happen but you know what i mean if you're yeah, costing yeah. them so much money where it's like literally like it's not worth it you know what i mean i don't want you to make the, the best star wars game ever and then come out and it'd be like well it's gonna be it's gonna be a commercial failure and we're never gonna try to do that again because we didn't sell enough copies you know what i mean because that's gonna just shut down people trying to make star wars games right. no like make something that you know that's good and i don't think what they're making is gonna be bad and i, I do think this game's gonna turn out just fine um People can shit on EA as a as a corporation all they want, but EA does make quality games. There hasn't been one EA game in the last I don't know. I don't play all EA games, so I don't know. But like four years, I could say that I would say is garbage. I mean, there's ones that aren't great, but right. I, I wouldn't say there's anything that's like garbage. I mean, I don't think there's any game that's actually fucking garbage, but I don't know. I I, I do think this is probably for the best for the game at least for the developers. It obviously sucks. I, I feel bad for them because I mean. Losing a job is always tough, but right, right, yeah. It's. But, I mean, and, and like you said, we're gonna get you know we'll get more details, and and definitely we'll talk about it when more details arise, and as we get you know as we get closer to whatever game they are making, as it gets closer to what they really want, um, we'll talk about it some more. I'm sure on the podcast yeah. and you know in other mediums and things like that. Definitely. Well, the next story, um, and I put this in there just because I thought yeah. it was interesting. Um, uh, IGN was speaking to Game Freak director um, Shigeru Omori. Ooh, did I did I butcher that? No I might idea. have butchered that in name. Anyway, um, so I always try to about... I always try to say the names as weird as I possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was it was an interesting art, um, re, uh, interview that they had um, on oh, IGN. IGN. So basically, your... he explained, and I'll quote this um, IGN article. It says that he explained um, that the company has seen each of its 3DS games as the full extent of what could be achieved on the handheld console. Uh, quote: When we were making Pokemon X and Y, we really were trying to push the 3DS system. To its absolute limits, which is what we thought we'd done. But when Sun and Moon came around, we completely redesigned the system and actually ended up pushing the 3DS even far further to what we thought was most was the most we could draw out of it. Um, however, that process of improvement seems to have come to an end. Um, with the upshot being that Game Freak will move on after the games, um, the new games release on November 17th. So basically saying that 
with with Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, they've kind of hit their limit with what they want to do with Pokemon games. Um, so basically, I just thought this was newsworthy because, um, I mean, it'll be interesting to see where Pokemon games will go. If they think Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon is like at the highest peak and they can't do any more, um, we might be getting some new and creative Pokemon games in the future. I'm super glad to hear this because mm -hmm. I'm a huge Pokemon fan. Yes, yes. And I also bought a fucking Switch because at the reveal event they said that Pokemon would be on the Switch. That's what, that's what I thought too. <laughs> um, so It's been how many months? Yeah. <laughs> Again, I, I didn't expect it to be launch title, but I, I do think it was a little slap in the face when they like showed that like that Pokemon Direct and it was that kid running across country and like, it's like they're going to reveal it, they're going to reveal it. And they were like, Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon for the 3DS and then Pokin for the fucking Switch. And I was like, wait, what? No. Yeah, man. dog. Pokin tournament. No, yes. man. Come on. Yes. Like, don't do me like that. But uh, <laughs> no, I'm glad. I mean, I think this is kind of like a, a no brainer almost. I mean, they, they can't. They, they, I'm, they have to be done with the 3DS because they have to move on to the Switch. And Pokemon, I don't think... Uh, yeah, no, I'm going to say it. I, they haven't ever been a cross-generation. Like, there hasn't been... You know, the, I understand the Game Boy Color, you know, cartridge could work sometimes in the Game Boy or whatever, you know, but, like, and vice versa. The DS game could work in the 3DS, but they never released one on, like, two platforms. They weren't like, oh, here's the here's the DS version, here's the Game Boy version. You know what I mean? Right, so, right. And I, I think if, if you're a Pokemon fan and you don't own a Switch, like, now's the time to buy a Switch. And, like, I... I I, I was hoping they would already have something. I would hope I was hoping they would just port the uh, Sun and Moon over um, to get people to buy switches. But yeah, I mean, I understand what you're saying. I, I like that this they they have said they basically they've reached the limit. Like this can't do any more. Um, yep. And it's kind of like giving themselves that cushion to move over uh, on to the Switch. Yeah, the Game Boy versions did work with the N6. You know what? You're just being a smartass now, Abyssal Zombie. That's <laughs> yeah, they worked, but they went like they didn't make like a specific cartridge for the you know. But yeah, no. So yeah, they uh they will move on hopefully to bigger and better things. I do. I really want to see what a Pokemon for the Switch is going to look like. Yeah. Um, you know, with these newer Pokemon, they've moved away from like the just left right movement. They've made it more three three dimensional. Um, where you can kind of just run around. I would love to see like a freaking like freaking breath of the wild you know you just come out and you're oh. just like running around there's pokemon roman and shit i'm gonna get oh, myself too hyped man. but well and i mean i've never really played a lot of pokemon games but oh yeah. if they had something like open world breath of the wild style i mean i mean and all they've really announced really is that it's a core pokemon rpg yeah. that's in development for the switch so we'll see what happens but um yeah it's gonna I be classic turn-based shit but i mean it's it's whatever like it's yeah. it's a Pokemon I know and love, and they're just gonna make it on the Switch. That's all I want. Just do that, and I will buy four copies of the game. Like yes, it, it's fine. Yes, like, you will. The deluxe version. <laughs> yeah, I don't even care, man. But yeah, that's that's for Pokemon at least. That's right. That's um, right. Yeah, this next one you pulled up was kind of goofy. I didn't know anything about this. So yes. yeah, tell me about this a little bit, because I so so I thought it was interesting. Um. So Sony announced, and they announced it yesterday, um, that they're making a mini PlayStation 4 controller that's aimed at children. So it's a, an official licensed peripheral, um, and it says, so just as just a quote from the IGN article, um, the PlayStation 4 mini wired gamepad is 40% smaller than the regular DualShock 4, sacrificing the standard controller's touchpad and light bar. Um, so certain touch inputs um, will still be simulated by the smaller left and right sticks. Um, I just thought it was interesting because I, like I said before, I do have young kids. Um, they don't seem to have an issue with the DualShock controller or just the regular Xbox controller. So I just thought it was kind of interesting that that's the direction they're going. I kind of figured that they would eventually do like a design lab type thing where you can design your own DualShock controller, yeah. which would be sick. I mean, that'd be a ton of fun. Um, but this is kind of the direction they're going. So I thought it was interesting. Um, it's going to retail for about 30 bucks, uh, US dollars. Um, and so, yeah, I just I just thought that was really, really interesting. I mean, it's a nice, I, I cheap know. controller, yeah. I mean, and yeah. what I really like here is it, it's made by Hori, um, if that's how you pronounce it. Um, <laughs> which, but, I, but they do make Hori. fighting sticks and stuff like that, and I actually do have a few of their peripherals, and they make really good quality stuff. 
Um, I saw when I first saw this, I when they say it's aimed at kids, I thought it was more aimed at like retro dorks who want to play, you know, like <laughs> games like that. And like people are like, oh, I need my fighting games. I need all my buttons right here. And like like Travis and stuff like that. Uh, you know, he plays right. Skullgirls or whatever, like stuff like that. Like I thought it was for people like that. So, I mean, I understand like it being for maybe like they're saying it's aimed for kids, but I really think it's going to be aimed for like the 35 year old dude who still plays Street Fighter 2 yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, that's right. Just 30 bucks ain't bad. Yeah, and, and honestly though, like it's gonna be a cheap controller. So like if you need a cheap like that that's gonna be the little brother controller. You know what I mean? Like, hey, I'll buy this right. controller, I'll give it to you when you gotta play. Like that that's about it. That's but right. no, that's a neat that's a neat story. Um let's go ahead and get um hashtag retro dorks. Um, yeah, retro dorks going on in the in the chat. That'd be great, guys. <laughs> just, just fuck with Jason. Sorry. I gotta <laughs> I got I got to shit on the retro stuff when Jason's around just cuz it, it makes me feel better about myself. Uh, <laughs> Sorry Jason. Yeah. Oh, IGN, IGN articles. Okay, so and then this is kind of wrapping back up to Destiny. Uh, we got another new story um for you Destiny guys. The yeah. prestige raid is live. Yes. For your, you people who want to go do that or have the time to do it. Um it is a recommended power level of 300 um and yeah, it's I don't really understand the uh, reason for it right now because if you're going to do it, you're just going to get gear that's going to help you get to 305 since that's the max. Yep. Um, so I'm a little confused about it. But I, I think it's just gloating purposes. Like, yeah, I did it. Yeah, that's I mean, say why you do it. If, I just wish the people who spend the time doing the procedure just help me get through the raid. Just right. Somebody, somebody come help me get through the raid. Just carry me, please. <laughs> but yeah, that's. I mean, that's not too deep, but. That's all. Um, this next one, I'm going to let you go with because you've been talking about this a little bit before the cast. Yes, and I do apologize for uh, just all the IGN articles. Um, just on a side note, I hate all the ads and videos that they do, and I really, really wish they would change. Um, that'll be a, a story for another day. But um, anyway, so just just another article. Um, with Wolfenstein 2 coming out next week, there's been a increase in social media presence. Little quick 10-second videos um hashtags um for example no more nazis is one of the big hashtags that's coming out with it so there was an article on ign um that basically talks a little bit about the marketing um and just 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 a, co a couple quotes from the article um it, it just says you know wolfenstein 2 the new colossus marketing is intentionally trying to tying into real world events um bethesda confirmed in a new interview uh, but developer machine games decided on the game story long ago and did not intend the game to offer any specific social commentary on recent events um as you guys know there's a lot of crazy stuff going on uh especially with um one side of the equation who happens to really like nazis apparently um and those others who fight them on a daily basis whenever they come out to um do any any type of protesting um so it, it, there's been some social media um backlash in a way um which is just funny because i mean Wolfenstein's been out for years, what, almost 25 years, 30 yeah. years? Something Honestly, like I was going to say, I think it's, but, it's older than me. Like, so. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's stupid old, right? So it really shouldn't be a surprise that these hashtags are coming out or these the social media is coming out saying, you know, no more Nazis. Um, and there is just, in it, uh, if you look for the article from IGN, it does show one of the videos, which is hysterical, where it says there's only one side and then, you have your main character just punching a Nazi right in the face. Yeah, it's, BJ just it, fucking you, knocks just him. Just knocking him out. Um, it, it's just beautiful. So, it, you know, I think as we get geared up to the release next week, we'll probably see more and more of this stuff. Um, but I just want to point out that the Bethesda social media team is the greatest of all time for just having videos on Nazis getting knocked out yeah i mean they're killing it i, I, I think, think we need more <laughs> yeah i think if you're upset by this um you, you seriously got a problem obviously um i mean that's fine if i'm not going to judge anybody for the political views or whatever but right. um they're talking about nazis like world war ii nazis um so if that's upsetting you i'm a little confused because like there was only like there, there was you know like there was the side on world war II, like we, we fought nazis like i don't understand yes. what we're getting upset about like they're not like i don't know it's it's goofy um no, yeah, I, it's just I, weird. I don't even know what to say about it. It's just so like I don't I don't get how people are upset. Yeah, I, just, just people get mad just to be mad. Yeah, like, no maybe this could have been our itching not. and burning section. I don't know. Maybe it could have been. So. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah. there's there's that with the Wolfenstein two stuff. That's uh, Very. yeah, it's interesting. I mean, kudos to them. They're just they're promoting the game. Um, 
I bet they could have apologized or could have done something completely different. But dude, the game's been out for years, and at least it doesn't show them shooting Nazis, right? They're just yeah. punching Nazis right well, now. Well, I think so there was another one I saw where the guy guns down a Nazi and then a KKK guy with a shotgun. And oh, I, I saw that one, and I was like, "That's fucking awesome!" But yeah, like, yes, that's. That's the way to go. Good for Wolfenstein. Don't, yeah. don't, don't, you know, make sure to promote the game as you see fit, as you've been planning for months. Don't let the political climate change how you're going to promote your game. You're trying to get it out and get it sold as many copies as possible. So just stick to your plan. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, definitely. All right. So let's, yeah, um, move on to this one. Yeah. Tell me about this Activision <laughs> microtransaction patent because this, this looks interesting. It, it, it's very interesting read. Um, so here is just a quote. Um, and then there was an update to this article. Um, just a, a representative from Activision provided a statement to IGN. Um, so basically the original story um, is that there was this patent that was fil uh, filed back in 2015. Okay. Um, and basically it's described as, quote, a system and method that drives microtransactions in multiplayer video games. The patent outlines a system in which players are matched together in such a way that it encourages the purchase of in-game content. That's hilarious. Ah, so for example, the system may match a more expert or key player with a junior player to encourage the junior player to make game-related purchases of items possessed or used by the marquee player. Um, so as you can imagine, um, there was a, in my opinion, a very big uproar. Um, it's very tricky talking about microtransactions. It's, you know, and people don't like it. I don't think, I don't think the majority of the people like microtransactions. Um, so just seeing this file, uh, this patent that was, that was, um, filed, it's just, it's kind of crazy. Um, and it's interesting because, um, What's stopping these companies from doing something like that? Just tweaking the code where you're matched up with higher level, you know, players with different weapons and then just having a little pop up that says, oh, you can buy this in the store for this much money. Um, so it's really interesting to see that that's kind of the way that some companies think. Um, but just an update, um, the Activision representative said, quote, this was an exploratory patent filed in 2015 by an R&D team working independently from our game studios. It has not been implemented in game. Um, I don't know if you believe that or not, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't... <laughs> it, it makes me wonder. The way I see it here, so the way, I mean, maybe the way you're talking about it, the way I saw it when, you know, you're talking about it. Yeah. So I'm playing Destiny or whatever, and I'm running around, and uh, Destiny, you can get these cool, like, ornament or ornaments for your exotic weapons. Oh, um, so yes, like, yes. Yeah, let's say, like, you have the Rat King, you can, you know, get this thing to make it look a little differently, because you can't put uh, camels. Let, let's use Call of Duty. This is easier. So Call of Duty has weapon skins, obviously. You got the fucking weed leaves that are all different colors on your gun, and you get the you get the kill at the end of the game, and everybody sees it, and they're like, oh, that's cool. I want to go buy it. That's um, right. That to me, like, it's really not that like I don't think it's as predatory as people are making it out to be. Um, it's it's literally just advertising in game with your player, which is a little. I mean, it's a little fucked up, but it always comes down to me is like it's a business and they they want to sell things. Um, and if you can't control yourself because you saw, you know. 69 69 sniper fuck your mom 69 you know kill you with this cool gun like then that's your problem as an adult with a credit card or whatever like that's right that's you gotta be able to have them show this shit and you shove shit like this down your throat and be able to be like no i'm good like and if you can buy it, then buy it, whatever. I mean, it's, it's your fucking vice. Like there's people yep. I know who spend thousands of dollars on like online games and shit like that. Um, and it's like, that's dumb, but you're getting enjoyment out of that. And you're, that's your money you work for or whatever. Yep. I, I don't, I mean, it is fucked up and I could see, obviously again, like I said, this almost all these news lists could be on the itching and burning, but uh, I could see why the <laughs> internet's pissed off about it, but it's one of those things where like the internet gets pissed off about everything. And it's like, yes, it, it, do. I don't know why the internet, I don't know why certain people, I don't want to classify it as one person, but I don't want to, I don't see why certain people get upset when they're like the people that are making a game and they spend $200 million on making destiny. They want to make money. What? Can you believe these guys? They worked, they worked hundreds of hours, 
thousands of hours probably. Yeah. They they didn't get to see their kid get born because they were working on a video game and they want to make they want to make some money. Fuck those guys. Like that's right. It's like whatever, dude. Like it, as, it's as as studios get shut down. Yeah, and, exactly. Oh. As the studio got shut down, you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> I, honestly, to me, this is kind of like cool because like I would love to be able to like see cool fucking weapon skins I want. But mm -hmm. then my see the way I purchase in game shit is like oh if I see everybody have it I'm not gonna buy it you know what I mean like yeah I'm gonna yeah. buy when I'm gonna buy when nobody else has it. But I don't know I can see why people are pissed off. I, I you know maybe I'm dumb but I do take Activision for their word for this that it hasn't been uh, you know implemented in game. I do think you know they have to be honest because if if they would say it's not implemented in game and somebody you know cracks call of duty three or whatever and right. finds this somehow in there that's that's huge for them you know that that's a that's yeah. a class action lawsuit you know by everybody who played call of duty so i think that's they're right. going to be honest about it i do think it'd be way too difficult to implement um on top of like all the other matchmaking things um i i don't think you're ever going to be matchmaking with somebody based on they bought a weapon skin and you didn't and you know we're looking for players and they're going to prioritize that i do think if they did right. that though it, it wouldn't be that honestly that fucking bad because if you really can't control yourself that that's a personal problem that's not a company's problem from paying playing on that uh, yeah playing on that but praying yeah, on exactly that, you know exactly and you know and it, it so in some of the games their microtransaction system is just different so um it's just an interesting thought um and yeah just another reason for internet to get mad because you know how dare you take our money yeah um but yeah i i think you know i i do agree with you that i think with the the representative even if they probably were exploring it like people are exploring things all the time and pay, making patents because they don't know if it's going to click or not um it could be a great system that you know really engages gamers and they really enjoy it um so why not file a patent for it but yeah in this day and age like you said i mean they will find that code if it's stuck anywhere if they're lying yeah. so um you know we'll, we'll we'll just take them at their word for it and go from there at least for now <laughs> yeah at least for now um do you want to skip this next one and we'll talk about it last yeah yeah we'll skip this one um okay because there's a there's a couple ones that are just really quick um, news stories that we'll just run through real quick. Um, the Xbox Fall update is available for everybody. Yes. So get on that and download that. I like it. I've been playing with it for a little bit. I'm on one of the uh, I, I'm one I'm on one of the preview rings. Just kind of yeah, the later here. ones. Uh, yeah. It's, it's I'm not like the alpha ring. That'd be amazing. But, I will say um, I, I just want to jump in and say like you know before yeah. we jump off this, I, it is a quick story, but I do want to ex uh, expand on it a little bit. Um, this made me start playing my Xbox more. Yes. Um, because I can go to the store. I can go to my games. I can load shit and not take five minutes because there's been so many times where I like turn on my Xbox and I'm like, my games and apps. And it's like, yes. bloop, 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 bloop. And I'm just like, nope, turn it off. Turn on my PS4. Yep. Um, it's I actually so haven't turned on my PS4 in the past week. Um, that's, I mean, that's obviously because of the game. I mean, that, but that was honestly the deciding factor of like, I bought Shadow of War on my Xbox. I bought yeah. Shadow of War on my, or uh, not Shadow of War. I bought South Park on my Xbox because the system, the the update looks great. It's it's beautiful UI, and it it just works. It just finally, finally, the Xbox just works, and that's yes, that's a huge thing. But yeah, yeah. I, I was a bit surprised because I heard the rumors that it was fast, and so I was trying it out. I'm like, holy crap! There's no this. It was incredible. So yeah. I really like it. Um, just just some notes about it. Um, there's more customization options on this um, one. You can have up to 40 pins. You can pin a ton of your favorite games and apps on there if you want. You can change uh, contrast themes. Um, the guide is a lot faster, like we just mentioned. Um, and there's some other little tiny things that are really cool, um, especially with the settings. Um, getting ready for any 4K updates, you can click a box to have it upgrade automatically. Um, and with this ring, if I, I believe it's this ring. If not, it's going to be in the next one. Um, you're going to be able to uh, record up to like 60 minute um, game clips onto your uh, hard drive. You can also, um, I noticed um, when I was missing with the mixer tab, it mm -hmm. says that, I mean, I'm not sure maybe if I saw this wrong, but it looks like I can now plug in a USB camera yes, instead of a connect. Correct. Okay, yeah, so no that is true. No, yep, that is true. No more connect. Um, awesome. I think the one I'm talking about might be a next upcoming one. Okay. Um, but yeah, you can do a USB cam to do one-on-one -on -one either Skype or broadcasting on mixer. Um, yeah, you can you know capture 4K clips nice. um again directly on an external hard drive um you know if you have the bandwidth you can broadcast at 1080p 
if you're doing Mixer or Twitch. Um, so anyway, great job, Microsoft. Um, great update. Yeah, I think I, this I, is a great I, update to prepare for uh, the people who are going to buy Xbox One S's. Um, because yes. when you buy a $500 system, you're going you're gonna to want it to be speedy fast or you're going to be pissed off. So That's right. Correct. Correct. Um, so this next story, um, I just I received an email um, from some of our PR friends about Lawbreakers. Um, it, it, so they have a big content that or a drop that just arrived. Um, I want to say it was today or yesterday. Um, I think it was today. Um, so they updated the game. Um, but the big question is, is it enough? I mean, have you played it at all? Have you played um, or, or maybe a copy at all? Uh, yeah, I played like three or four matches. Um, I'm, okay. just, I, I'm just not into first person shooters on the PlayStation. Um, especially gotcha. arena shooters like this where I'm not aiming down sights and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. it was, it was really off putting to me when I first played it. I honestly have been really itching to get back into it. It is on sale right now from uh GOG. And yeah, I'm so thinking maybe, about maybe picking it up PC. because it's like 20 bucks. And I was like, man, um, I, my big problem is kind of what this article talks about is like their player count dropped down to 10 yes 10 yeah. concurrent users <laughs> like i i'm not saying they should go free to play but my problem is 30 dollars on a game right now like it, just drop it maybe do a bigger sale or something to get to just get that lifeblood in the game you know right. and just because even i think there was like a free weekend but it was only on no it was on pc too but like yeah i, I don't believe the sale was that what was that great no, it, it could have been lower, I think, especially with, um, and what we're talking about, guys, is there was a story a little while ago um, with the player count. Um, in, in, like, one afternoon, they jumped online, and there was, like, ten players online, which was enough for basically one match, five on five. Yeah. Um, with this update, I mean, there's going to be, um, there's different leagues that's going to be available, new maps that are available, um, a lot of adjustments with balance and, to you know, improved tutorials, some item drops and things like that. Um, but, yeah, it's just something to think about. Is that enough? Um, who knows? Who knows if that's going to be enough? Um, but they do, I think they need more free to play weekends. I think they need to do a few more things, um, to hopefully get that player count up again. Yeah. Cause and I mean, I, 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 yeah. it's, I think it's enjoyable. I mean, I'm kind of the same, I'm just terrible at, at, you know, shooter games, arena games like that. Um, even overwatch, I'm terrible at it. Um, so, you know, I, there's, there is an audience for it. So hopefully they can find a good, um, a good balance that can get more players on there. Yeah. And I mean, I, I really want to see Bosky do good. I mean, Cliffy, I give him shit all the time, but I mean, I like him as a developer. I just think he's got a big mouth, you know. But yes. that's coming from somebody with a big mouth, so whatever. But, <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, I hope he does great. I, I hope Bosky stays around. I would hate to see, an, uh, you know, a, de especially an indie developer like that close. Um, but that's like, I want to buy the game. I, I may just jump on after this and buy it. But it's one of those things where, like, man, I look at the player count. I look at that there's, like, four people watching it on Twitch. Like... Yeah. It just scares me that, like, not the popularity of the game, but I just, I don't know. And, like, I haven't played enough to tell you, is, is the magic there? Like, is it a good game? I don't know. And it's like, my problem is, do I spend 30 bucks to find out if, if it's a good game? You know, that's right. that's what scares me. Um, I guess I could buy it on Steam. I don't know if Steam has it on sale, but if Steam had it on sale, I could refund it. But regardless, yes, yeah. whatever. That's true. Um, At least give it a shot there. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're, um we just have a few more stories, and then we have one big story that we probably just we want to address yeah. um and we'll we'll get there so twitchcon is this weekend um i don't know i think they still have tickets on sale if you're in the long beach area in california so hit them up see all your favorite streamers and partners and what's kind of interesting about twitchcon that i like is they have like workshops which i think would be really interesting if you're getting into the streaming game yeah. um just seeing what other streamers have struggled with what works for them what doesn't work for them um so there's just interesting stuff that you can find at twitch have you been to twitchcon before i have not i okay. really want to go one day i yeah. i think it'd be really just fascinating um not so much just meeting all the influencers. I mean, that's cool, but I think really kind of the workshops and and you can I'm sure see stands of like gear that can help your Twitch be, or your your stream become even better. Um, that that stuff kind of interests me. So one day it'll be nice. It's just it's kind of pricey yeah. for that three days. It's like two hundred bucks or something. Ouch. Um, yeah, I ate. I, I mean, that might have been at the door price. It might be a little cheaper online, but still pretty expensive. Um, so one day, one day we'll go. Yeah. Um, the next story, just IGN buy uh, bought Humble Bundle. 
this week. Um, what do you think? Do you think that will affect anything? I, um, mean, I don't. I, I don't know if it will or not. It's just a you know little blip that came up with news. I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I, I'm. Just, I'm confused. I mean, they're yes. they're a news outlet primarily. They they bought a publisher and digital distribution service. I, I don't. I don't understand the move. I mean, there's people in boardrooms that are smarter than me. Under you know know what they're doing, so they they probably see this for some reason. Um, it's I don't know. I, I don't know what the, what they're gonna do. I I don't know why everybody freaked out. They're like, oh my god, IGN, IGN's gonna not give money to charity anymore. Like I don't. People right, like that are dumb. Right. But like, if anything, they're gonna promote it more. Yeah, um, on their site somewhere with even more ads. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I have issues with IGN, but this one I. You know, it is what it is. There, there is a um, good, there is something down here they talk about. I think it's, oh, let me see here. Mundo provided with Polygon the following statement from Mitch Galbrathy, executive ooh. vice president and general manager at IGN. Uh, editorial integrity is something we take very seriously at IGN, and I'm confident that we will strike the right balance when it comes to our coverage of Humble Bundle and the games that they sell. Um, That was my concern. Is it, 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 it going to affect the games that they're allowed to carry? Because, right. you know, if it, it is going to be hard, like, okay, so IGN gave. Uh, let's. What, what's a game coming? Up? Fuck it. I don't know. Mario's coming to PC. IG, IGN gave Mario a ten. Now they're selling it on Humble Bundle. Uh, mm, you know what I mean? Like what? Okay. Like that's that okay. to me. That's just a little weird. But it's it's you know I I trust that IGN isn't gonna be um isn't gonna be like that uh at all because I, I I mean you can say what you want about IGN but I do believe they, I do believe they have a lot of uh editorial integrity. I, I don't think their shit's like fucking paid off like people always want to say it is. But uh, yeah. Right. Abysmal mentions a uh, tax write-off. Yeah, I mean. Service. Yeah, but they're definitely going to make money for it because they, it's also you know a digital you know they have a digital store like Humble Bundle isn't just the charity stuff you can you know just go to their store and buy shit like that's that's actually where uh, Lawbreakers on sale actually not GOG I am wrong it's actually on sale on Humble Bundle right or Humble oh, right now. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, it's okay. it's twenty bucks so. Okay, yeah. that but, makes sense. But <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, I should get more. Let's see. Uh, Abysmal says, from what I understand, IGN can get more games added to inventory and bundles, while Humble Bundle had a bit hard time getting games and giveaways and selling the store. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that would, that would be great. That would be the best possible scenario, is since they have IGN backing them now, Humble yeah. Bundles are now going to be fucking bomb. You know what I mean? Like, they're just going to be like, you can get fucking Divinity 2 for a dollar, and people are going to be like, what? Oh. Like, you know, I mean, that's not going to happen, but like... <laughs> I just hope they don't change the pricing around. It's like, pay a minimum of $20. Like, oh, no. I like the old. <laughs> I like just paying a buck. You know, that's that's part of the that's part of the appeal of it. Yeah. Um, okay, so we just have a couple more news stories, guys. Um, real quick, there's a rumor that Lego Dimensions is going to be officially done. So, um, all the stories that are out there right now are saying they had a three year plan. They're in year two right now, and it looks like they're not even going to do a year three, um, which sucks because. I, I personally like Lego Dimensions. My kids love it. Just pop the, bought the Teen Titans pack, and it's hysterical. It's just it's fun times. Um, so it's a bummer, but you know, it's we'll see. We'll see if anything you know changes. Like with Disney Infinity going out, Lego Dimensions supposedly going out. I mean, Skylanders. I don't even know if it sells anything anymore. Like if this. I mean, it's toy business done. Yeah, I think the Toys to Life thing is kind of like going away. Yeah. Um, that, I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing. I mean, I, I liked Lego Dimensions. Um, I liked buying the shit. I never played the game. I literally yeah. have like a bag full of Lego, Lego Dimension stuff that I, I, I literally was trying to give away at GameStop one day because like they don't take it in for trade, oh. uh, and nobody would take it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is it is concerning because I mean I was I really like Disney Infinity because I like Disney as a brand. So I was like I just want to buy your fucking toys, dude. Like just yes. publish them. Um, because I have all the Star Wars figurines they release. So like. And I never played the game once. I just had the Star Wars figurines. <laughs> um, so it's it's one of those, like, where... I don't know. I, I'm a little... Because Lego's a cool brand. You know, it's like... If I had to pick one, if you were, like, telling me, like, Disney, Lego, or Sp Spyro, I'd be like, dude, fucking Spyro's gonna fold first. No doubt. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't think Lego would be done. Um, because Lego should have the money behind it to keep up with a development studio. Um, I think the big problem Lego Dimensions ran into is, like... It, it was kind of confusing because, like, why don't you just make, like, okay, they need to stop making, like, Lego Ninjago and Lego fucking Harry Potter and Lego this. Just yeah. make Lego Dimensions your platform and then yes. release new games 
on the platform. So it'd be like, hey, here's the new Lego Harry Potter game. It's a $60 set of Legos and you get a game. And hey, there's a $30 expansion pack that comes out in two months or whatever, you know, shit like that. Like, and just drive people to do shit like that and buy the game. Um, I don't know. I, I was confused about their whole business plan. I, I kind of th- thought it was set up to fail anyway, just because of how it was, uh, how it was orchestrated. But and a lot of money for those licenses for sure. Yeah, Tons definitely. Of money they probably paid for that. And licenses um, and- that I never understood, like. Yeah, eight. Well, I mean, not eighteen. What was what was a weird one? Um. There was one I was thinking about the other day. Uh, like the Midway Arcade was a little weird. Yeah, that was goofy. Um, like, um, yeah, there's I mean, Mission Impossible, which is I like the series, but I mean, the series is kind of old. Like, I don't think kids would like go, "Ooh, Ethan Hunt," and then go buy a yeah. bunch of a bunch of his packs. I mean, yeah, there's just these weird ones that are spread out into um, into Lego Dimensions, which is really weird. Mm-hmm. Um, and then think about this. Remember the Ubisoft conference at E3? Remember they announced that like weird ship toy game that they're gonna have going on? I no. think it was Ubisoft. Yeah, there was the and so it's like seeing these other companies fold. Oh, I kind of know what you're talking about. Yeah, it was like a spaceship thing, about? right? Yes. Hang on, I gotta look it up. I can. Yeah, me too. I wanna... Ubisoft toy to life. Oh, Google knows me so well. Starlink. Starlink. Yes, battle for an Atlas. Yeah, that's going to be terrible. Um, <laughs> whoa, 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 that shit looks cool as fuck, man. No. What are you talking about? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Not for me. Uh, maybe it's just not not for me. I mean, it looks uh, bad as hell, but I want to fucking mess with toys and put them on my controller and shit. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you put it on the controller, you can change out guns and like... What yeah, that's canceled. Things like like, that. I'll, I'll just tell you right now, that game's canceled. Like That game's done. They're not releasing that game. I'm like, I, it's just bad, bad climate for it. Um, abysmal, yeah. So that was the... That was the game, though. Um, just, it's, yeah, Starlink. It was, it was odd. It was odd during that presentation. And now with this rumor that LEGO Dimensions is finished, um, kind of a bad climate to be doing Toys of Life games. But hey, let them, let them spend their money. Do their thing. Good luck to them. Yeah, it, that's, well, I don't know, it's weird. <laughs> hopefully it'll work. I don't know. <laughs> um, you, had one, you had a story that you threw on there about Windows 10. Uh, yeah, where did I, did I? Uh, yeah, right above Lego Dimensions. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, sorry. Uh, Microsoft adds the anti-cheat to Windows 10. This is uh, from, obviously, from NeoGAF. That's where I pull most of my shit from. Um, it's called TruePlay. It's come with that new, it comes with that new Windows update that they had. Um, it's basically a UWP anti-cheat, so that's the Windows Store game anti-cheat. Um, it, it's there, I guess. I don't know, it's... It's something that I just th- thought was, you know, to mention. It's a short one, but yeah, it's a global anti-cheat for UMP. I gotcha, gotcha. See, I don't do much with Windows 10, so I mean, is it necessary? I guess it's got to be. Yeah, you know, I mean, right? you can toggle it on and off. It's, it's, you know, it's whatever. Like, oh, okay, okay. I mean, I got, I, I got some games I could play. Just the Xbox Play Anywhere stuff on Windows 10. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I guess, I guess, I, I don't know too much about that world of cheating in Windows 10 and all that all that good stuff well we have one more uh news story that we just want to touch on because i know it's a pretty sensitive subject um i i mean matt and i were talking about this earlier off camera but not sure how qualified we are to really discuss it but um over the weekend a developer at naughty dog um discussed their um a, a, a situation with sexual harassment um, mm-hmm. at the workplace for Naughty Dog. So the big story this week really was not only his statements about what happened, um, but also Naughty Dog's statement about the allegations. Um, and it's 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 pretty interesting. Let me just read Naughty Dog's statement, if that's okay. Um, it was really it was really short to the you know I'll, I'll, we'll get to it in just a second. It was really short. Um, here's what they said though. We have recently read on social media that an ex-employee of Naughty Dog, David Ballard, claims he was sexually harassed when he worked at Naughty Dog. We have not found any evidence of having received allegations from Mr. Ballard that he was harassed in any way at Naughty Dog or Sony Interactive Entertainment. Harassment and inappropriate conduct have no place at Naughty Dog and Sony Interactive Entertainment. We have taken and always take reports of sexual harassment and other workplace grievances very seriously. We value every single person who works at Naughty Dog and Sony Interactive Entertainment. It is of utmost importance 
to us um, that we maintain a safe, productive workplace environment that allows us all to channel our shared passion for making games. So just from that statement, Matt, what do you what do you think about that response from Naughty Dog? First of all, I mean that that it's a, it's a CYA statement. You know, it's a cover your ass statement. They they have to yes. say this to not you know because they can't say like oh yeah we definitely fucking knew about it and we just did nothing. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like right. they can't say that. Um. So to kind of back up a little bit, basically, uh, David Ballard said he was sexually harassed um at work, and he when he told HR they basically fired him the next day, and then uh, Sony corporate HR I think PlayStation HR got involved, told him what happened. Um, they fired him the next day, and they tried to offer him, like he said, I think uh, $20,000 in hush money, basically. Yeah, basically a severance paying condition yeah. that remains silent about it. Um, and then and he, he did, it yeah, he denied it. He said, no, fuck off. Like, and then he's been unemployed for the past 17 months. Um, yeah. The, the Naughty Dog statement, I don't take offense to, um, because I understand they have to say that, because Naughty Dog, for one, I don't really know if they should have said anything. Um, uh, right, right. It, it, is weird i don't know maybe they had to I, i'm not sure uh, about like the legalities of this i this like i said I, I believe this is a tried and true just like cya statement they, they just had to you know cover all their bases to make sure that if anything did happen if a civil suit was brought up or whatever they they had this statement out there um yeah what upsets me is people saying this is naughty dog dismissing that anything happened they, they are not doing that. They are just saying they have no record of it. Because, for right. one, you're not going to have record of sexual harassment at work. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know how, like, you would have a record of it. What upsets me personally is Naughty Dog made the statement. And everyone's like, David Ballard's a fucking liar. And I that pissed me off. Right. Because I really don't, I, I don't understand. And I don't want to get into this deeply. Um, But... I'm not sure how, you know, all this Harvey Weinstein stuff came out and people were like, oh yeah, Harvey Weinstein. And I'm not trying to make light of the fact like, oh, uh, you know, assaulted me, harassed me, whatever. Boom. Instantly we believe them. We fucking, you know, are death to Harvey Weinstein. This shit happens at Naughty Dog and it's a male figure that says this happens to. And as soon as Naughty Dog's like, oh, it didn't happen. They're like, oh yeah, fuck that guy who said it happened. I think I, I don't know if it's a gender thing. I don't know what it is. I just think it's fucking sick that we attack victims. And if he is lying, yeah, that's that's fucking wrong. Yeah. Either way, you know. But it's it just I don't understand how. Again, the internet, this fucking, has has turned on him. And I honestly think it's be it's it's literally people is not wanting to believe that Naughty Dog, their the golden child, can have stuff like this happen. Um. I I'll tell you right now, it probably does happen at fucking 99% of major studios because just oh, the yeah. way we talk in here in chat, you know, when we joke and we say stupid shit, that can be strewed as cons uh, sexual harassment. Like yeah. that can upset somebody. And, you know, in, in that way that that's what, that's what sexual harassment is. Um, so I do think, I mean, he did say in his statement, um, David Ballard did that it was with one of the leads and he didn't name any names. Um, yeah, right. Right. So, I mean, what I'm saying is like his story does sound believable, um, people are like, well, if they offered you twenty thousand dollars in hush money, they would have notes on that. No, no they wouldn't, because I don't think no. it's legal to offer somebody money to stay quiet about a sexual harassment. Like, correct, correct. Like, like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I just don't get what is fucking damaged with these people that they think like, oh yeah, Naughty Dog is gonna have a folder that says people who said that they were sexually harassed and we didn't do anything about. Like, they're not gonna have records of that. Um, right. And I think for me, like, especially over the weekend with the hashtag me too stuff that was on social media, um, it was just incredibly moving seeing all these people come forward, um, especially when you get into a social media place like Twitter, where there's just oh trolls and people on there um, being brave enough to come out with your story Um it just kind of trying to show support for everyone else that's been coming out. Um, it was incredibly moving. Um, and yeah, just seeing his experience, um, it was a shame. Um, just hearing that side of the story about, you know, especially when you hear about hush money and being fired and all that stuff. Um, I do wish that there was maybe a little bit more empathy in Naughty Dog's statement. I mean, of course, you probably can't do that because that would probably admit guilt. Um, because right now, again, these are allegations, but it's just, you know, it's I, it's I think it's really, really scary to come out and give details, especially in this world, because like you said, 
some are going to believe him. Some of them are just going to treat him horribly and be like, oh, no, that person's lying. There's no way that's true. Um, and that's just a scary situation because I mean, it happens on a daily basis to numerous people, men and, and, and women. Um, and so it's just I wish there wasn't a place for it. Um, I think you're right, though, about video games in general. I mean, gosh, look at the themes of video games that we have out. Look at the I mean, I know it's kind of a running joke, but, you know, you have your your warriors have this awesome armor and then your female warriors have this little skimpy thing yeah um, you know halter top yeah it's like little things like that i mean the industry has a bad look anyway in terms of how they treat women with respect um you know and in some cases men as well uh it's just it's it's a shame and i'm hoping that this won't keep people silent like some people are get, might go and look oh man if david ballard got shut down and people are calling him a liar who's gonna believe me and that's a dangerous thing like exactly if, if you're sexually harassed you gotta report it because otherwise it's not gonna stop it's gonna keep going um so i just i really hope that um people will still have the courage, especially after what's been going on this weekend with so many people coming out with their stories. Um, I'm, I'm hoping more have the courage to come out so we can, I mean, pray to God, hopefully we can wipe this out forever. Um, you know, that, that, that would be my hope at least. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all our news stories tonight, guys. Um, we wanted to jump in um, to our elbows deep topic for tonight um we actually had several really that we <laughs> we could have yeah we couldn't really about. decide on one <laughs> what here let's see what time? i think i think tonight though if you want to since we're i mean we're running pretty yeah, we're long, running so pretty long we might just um, oh shit that's not what i wanted <laughs> like 119 so, hours what the fuck holy that's, crap no. man. we're talking forever yeah. um let's go into the xbox one x Real quick. Yeah, I mean, let, we could maybe just cover each of these just kind of, you know, quick fire stuff. Um, yeah. So we are wondering, you know, how the Xbox One will sell and uh, will, you know, compare to the PS4 uh, PS4 Pro. Um, I, I think the Xbox One will sell to people who have Xboxes. I'm yes. not sure this is going to drive people to, like, switch consoles. I don't I don't think it, it... I mean, it's going to do it definitely to a few people. Um, I don't think it's just going to be a huge thing. I don't think it's going to drive people to the Xbox ecosystem. Um, I think maybe for the holiday, it's going to be like... Well, hey, I got, you know, little Timmy got, you know, $600 for Christmas. He, you know, he's a 14-year-old kid. He wants the most powerful console out there. And, like, that's how Xbox has been marketed. Um, so I think that's what it'll go, people will buy it for. I don't think it's going to, you know, have people be like, fuck my PS4 and throw it away. Because, um, after all, it's yeah. still the Xbox system. Um, yeah, I, um, I really... Uh want to meet timmy's parents because yeah. i would also like six hundred dollars for christmas i that agree would be really nice um you know what with you know the number the sales numbers came out um uh today i believe um the switch once again topped the charts um compared to uh you know outsold both playstation 4 and xbox one in september and it's the third month in a row that it sold so it, it's really interesting to Think about what the chances are for Xbox One X. I really want it to be successful. I really, really do. Um, my concern really is, and it, this also goes for the PlayStation Pro, is if there aren't going to be any exclusive games specifically to those consoles, I don't think they'll ever take off. No, they're um, always going to be a boutique item. They're going to be the... Correct. Yeah. Correct, because there are some people who don't have 4K TVs. I mean, I have one, but it's a really basic model, and I got it for, on Black Friday last year for like 500 bucks. So it may not, you know, the, the Xbox One X may not be at its full capacity if I just have a cheap 4K TV. Um, but even with, like, again, with PlayStation Pro, like, if the games are going to come out for the normal systems, and, um, I mean, uh, Abysmal brought this up in the chat, just... Xbox games, most of them are working on Windows 10. So, I mean, if you have nothing exclusive to these consoles, there are going to be boutique. They'll sell some, and the sales numbers will be nice. I mean, the, the pre-orders have sold out, 
in a, on a variety of platforms um, for Xbox One X on Amazon, on Best Buy, Target, Walmart. Um, all those sort those stores sold out the pre-orders. Um, but then, what's going to happen when more stock comes in? Is it going to collect dust on the shelf? Um, I looked up some numbers for PlayStation Pro, um, and there was an article back in June. So it has been a while. Um, but back in June, um, they were saying one in every five PS4 consoles sold was a PlayStation Pro, um, which is a pretty decent number. Um, I think I think Microsoft would love that type of number, if not more, um, for their Xbox One X. But I don't know, with Switch dominating... Um, I, I don't know if it's going to do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the Switch will be the hot console this holiday. I don't think you're going to hear about people wanting an Xbox One X for Christmas. I don't think you're going to hear people, especially, I don't think you're going to hear people asking about PS4 Pro for Christmas um, because I don't think the Pro has really, I, I don't think the Pro got the push it deserved. Um, yeah. I bought a Pro when it came out. I, I traded in my PS4 because, I, you know, I did the research. I knew that it had a better, you know, network card. That was a big thing for me. The, the PS4s topped out all the time with the network card. It, it topped out at slow-ass speeds. Um, so that was a big driving factor to purchase that. But I think the way it was marketed a lot of times was like, like it was it was like, oh, it, it looks better and it makes everything look better. And, like, people are like, well, I don't really care that much about if it looks better. You know what I mean? Um Right. right. I, I just think, and especially with the, with, you know, the, and that's the thing you're talking about exclusives, you know, is there an exclusive Xbox one title, is there an exclusive PS4 title? The switch is going to have exclusive this holiday. It's going to have Mario. You know what I mean? That's going to be yeah. a huge title that that's going to sell right. systems. Um, Xbox and PS4. I mean, even cross gener cross generation right now or cross console. I mean, um, there's no really big holiday titles, you know I mean? And this is kind of going back to games in general. There's nothing that's going to make somebody buy an Xbox or a PS4 over a Switch, I I, I personally think. Um, yeah. I mean, Assassin's Creed and stuff like that, of course, but I'm just trying to say, like, for a Christmas present for the holiday season, I think the Switch is going to be your go-to thing. I think with it with its stock demands, I think people are going to go with that. Right. I, I think it's going to blow away everything during this holiday season. I think the I Xbox One will sell... Oh, yeah, sorry, no, what were you saying? Oh, I was just saying, I, I, I tend to agree with you, especially with some of the bundles that are coming out now for the Switch. You know, get, having that Mario Odyssey bundle at Walmart is going to be huge. Yeah. It's just going to sell out so quick. Um, Splatoon 2, um, even though the game's been out for a while, I'm I'm sure those will sell because, man, those neon colors are so sick yeah. on that Switch. Um, you know, and PlayStation's still going to do a really good job because, I mean, hey, we got, you know, at least a few release windows for some of the huge AAA games that are going to be coming out on PlayStation um xbox will have like sea of thieves and uh my crackdown three yeah, yeah gotta represent that um you know that that's gonna be springtime so i think with the switch hol you know holidays will be nintendo dominated maybe during the spring we'll see xbox and playstation's numbers go up again. yeah because playstation i mean they're gonna have a big week at paris games week uh, when that happens and yeah they're gonna talk about uh you know all the stuff coming and hopefully ps uh, playstation will finally put dates on stuff and it'll make people yes. want to buy a ps4 you know they'll be like oh i gotta buy it this holiday you know i gotta ask mommy for it for christmas so i can get the new god of war when it comes out in march you know right. maybe that'll happen but like do i think the you know so let's break it down will the xbox one sell i think it'll sell better than the four, ps4 pro definitely i I, yeah. I think that's hands down i think just because of again the marketing behind it the way they marketed the product you know especially for someone like me i'm an easy sell you tell me this is the premium version this is the this is the boutique version. This is the this is the you know elite version. I'll be like fuck yeah, I want that. I want to feel fucking yeah. awesome. I want to feel better than everybody else. You know what I mean? Like give me that dopamine high of buying shit. You know, like I That's want right. that. So give me that. So yeah, I think the way they marketed it, it's gonna sell the dumbasses like me, and then just general people who like shit <laughs> like that, they're gonna buy it. And yeah. I think the way PlayStation did was just ass backwards and. The only people who bought it were the dumbasses like me. So <laughs> I think then the Switch, but then yeah, will will the Xbox outsell the Switch? Not a fucking chance because the Xbox isn't outselling anything right now. You know what I mean? It's just so right. stagnant. It's it's I honestly it's probably the worst selling. I I wouldn't be surprised if the SNES Classic sold more than the Xbox One did. Oh, like man, but I'm telling you, it, I it just uh, too little, too late. I love the S. Xbox One S, I love it. Yeah. How small it is, and the, you know how it looks. And for me, it ran a little quicker than the original Xbox One. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, and this update makes it even faster, which is amazing. Um, yeah, I just wish it did better. Um, you know, I think Phil Spencer's doing a, a really good job. Of, I mean, 
Xbox was in the pits and it's still struggling, but I think he's helped right the ship a little bit and at least got it in the right direction. Well, definitely. I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's going to be enough, but I mean, I at think least Xbox is playing the long game. Helpful. I mean, yeah. they're switching because, you know, PlayStation started out, they're like, we're for the gamers. We're for the gamers. But if you look at it, PlayStation has been slipping on that a lot, and they, they are yeah. not the most consumer-friendly system to play on anymore. They right. are going back to their PlayStation 3 roots where it was about, you know, their way or the highway type thing. Mm-hmm. Xbox is really starting to get a lot of goodwill with fans, and d- does that goodwill translate to sales? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe. I mean, we'll see in a few years, well, maybe in the next year or two, if the Xbox does start catching up ground. I mean, like I said, I used to be a PlayStation gamer all the fucking time. Like, I mean, not I was an Xbox guy. I bought a PS4 and an Xbox One. But lately, I've been only playing my PS4. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, I'm not really into, like, you know, my Xbox lately. But this new update, this these, you know, new games that they're... You know, Digital Foundry did a did a breakdown of uh, Shadow of War. And they're like, it's best played on Xbox One X. You know what I mean? Like, over PS4 Pro. And, and that's, like, saying a lot. You know what I mean? It's like, damn, okay, well, then I want to play it on my Xbox One X. So I think, I think Xbox is going to start gaining ground again. Um, I, I think they're going to move past, um, you know, the uh, not move past. That was a bad term. I think they're going to move past the past. Is what I'm trying to say. Like they're going to, you know, right. not be. They're not going to be getting beat. And honestly, when when you think about it, the Xbox didn't sell that bad. I mean, the PlayStation just sold so fucking good was the thing. Yeah, I mean, the Xbox sure still has, like, what, like, 30 million units out in the wild? Like, that's not yeah. a bad sell. You know what I mean? No, that, no. That, That's good. It just, unfortunately, so- Sony has, you know, double that or more than that, yeah. you know? So it's <laughs> like, than du- that's the problem. More than double now. I think it's, like, 64 million Yeah, it's, it's like a lot. Like it. um, ridiculous. But, see, Sony has been slowing down lately. I mean, I remember for the past year, I remember every now and then it's like, oh, hey, uh, Xbox sold the most this month. Oh, hey, uh, you know, Nintendo sold, you know, especially when the Switch came out, Nintendo's been killing it and selling the most each month. So yeah. it's like, I think the Sony stuff is, is slowing down. I think I think people are getting a little pissed off with Sony and, the, you know, that they don't want cross, they don't want cross server play and they don't want this and they don't want that. Uh, and, and they're not really good at marketing it. Um, bad move. Yeah, they, they say dumb shit where Xbox, you know, with Phil Spencer, he's like, we're for the gamer. We want this. And I mean, Andrew House is no longer with PlayStation, but he was the face of, you know, PlayStation. When yeah. you sit down in a room, would you want to hang out with Andrew House or would you want to hang out with Phil Spencer? You know what I mean? Like Exactly. And that that's kind of like after a while, like that's kind of how I view it. It's like I always made jokes about how when Andrew House came out, I always felt like it was like the Rebels versus the Imperials in Star Wars. Because he always came out and he had, you know, his like Australian or British accent or whatever. He's like, man, I'm a Grand Moff talking. Like, that's always what I saw when he came out. And like, you know, Phil Spencer came out with his like beer gun. He's got a t shirt. I was like, hey guys, what's up? Like, let's sell some games. Like, seriously. Yeah. And like, that's what I liked about it. You know, it's kind of like, and I think Xbox is getting that ground back. Um, Yeah. I, I definitely, I mean, I. I would bet money that they're going to sell more than the PS4 Pro um, yeah. in the first week, you know, that the PS4 Pro sold. Because I don't even think, oh, like... for sure. Yeah, I don't even think the PS4 Pro was, like... I, I remember they were like, oh, it's out now. You know what I mean? Like, they're yeah. like, it's out, you can get it. It's like, wait, what? I thought there wasn't, like, an event, there wasn't anything. <laughs> Xbox yeah. is going balls to the wall with their Xbox One X. I just hope it's worth it. Like, I hope I'm not going to fucking bring it home and plug in and be like, oh, it's an Xbox. Like, that's... Right. But, right. I mean, it's going to be. But it's... Uh, I don't know. And unfortunately, we're going to have to wait a little bit. I mean, I think Shadow of War, I, there's some games that already have the K assets ready to download. Yeah. Uh, but like Shadow of War is going to be one of the first ones that's going to utilize a lot of that RAM um, in an Xbox One X to help the game look even better and yeah. play even better. Um, but, so I think we're going to have to wait a little bit for some games to come out to really see how the power is going to be. Um, but I mean, I'm excited for it. I, I really want the X. Um, I think just because, yes, I do love Microsoft. I do. I love the Xbox. Um, and I do want it to be successful. And I'm just, I'm excited with how it's going. Um, and there just seems to be a lot of people that are, at least a lot of Xbox fans, granted, they're Xbox fans, but there there's a lot of people excited for the for the console to come out well yeah so. i mean there's a lot of people like me like the uh, the prodigal son you know what i mean like I, i'm coming back to xbox now like right. it's you know i i've been i've been cheating on xbox with playstation you know so much and like literally the other day i was like maybe i'll get rid of my playstation i was like no nah. like that was just like a thought like it's the first time right. i've had that thought right. in in years where i'm like do i really need a playstation 4 as well and like That's i right. had and like just two weeks ago i was like do i really need a fucking xbox as well you know what i mean so like 
I, I think this is, you know, going to bring back people who, who like Xbox and who miss Xbox. I think that, you know, especially the Xbox One X mixed with, you know, not just that, but the, I really think the big, the, the big thing that people are going to like forget to attribute this to when they write about it in the history books, when they write about the return of the Xbox, you know, they're, they're going to be like the Xbox One X is what brought it back. And I, what, what I think people are going to forget is honestly, it's this fall fucking update that is just so good. Like oh, I, yeah. I really think that needs so much credit. Like we all need to give whoever designed that at Microsoft a round of applause because that shit is, it literally is a game changer. It literally changes yeah. how you play your Xbox. It, it, it makes it an actual console. It's not, it doesn't feel so sluggish and disgusting. Right. Um, we, I'm just, we gotta think, we gotta think, uh, Mike Yabara. Who, yeah. Uh, He's one of those main guys that did it. Um, Abysmal, thank you. Uh, he, he, I completely forgot. Eight, Assassin's Creed Origins is also going to have yeah. Um, it's some not just 4K assets for the Xbox One X, but it's going to be playing a little bit better. Yeah, it's um, a 30 just, SPF. I was looking at it earlier. I know it's locked at 30 SPF. I think it's uh, the 4K HDR, all that jazz. Right, right. So yeah, I, I, I completely forgot Assassin's Creed was going to have stuff for the X as well. Um, so yeah, so there actually will be a couple games at least or more. Um, Halo, my, my, Microsoft's you know Golden Child is going to be releasing some assets for the Halo collection and Halo Five to be playable on Xbox One X, and it's going to change how it plays and and make it better. So um, there's definitely support behind it. I'm telling you, if they, if they had just like this game's exclusive for the One X, or if this game was exclusive for the PlayStation Pro, we're gonna sell more. But um, until that, yeah, time, I mean, just like know. I just want to kind of point back to Nintendo, just like how they did with like the Xenoblade Chronicles um, for DS. They had the you know in that Fire Emblem oh, game. Those are exclusive yeah. for the new 3DS. They they don't run on the old 3DS. Right. Um, so right, I was kind of hoping, right. I, I do think that sooner or later we're going to see at least Xbox do it, because I think Xbox will take the step first, and maybe Sony will do it, and I, I'm, it'll be a first party, you know, indie style game, of a $14, $14.99, you know, it, downloadable game or whatever, but, uh, but like, yeah, so I think it's going to be something like that, but it'll be like, hey, this is to showcase what the Xbox One X can do. Yes. And here it is, and it's only for Xbox One X. But I did, do think maybe it'll piss too many people off if they do that. So I don't know if they're going to do that, but I would I would love if they right. did something like that. Just to because again, this you know this is just how I am and how stupid I am. You know I like that feeling of like I bought this, like reward me for fucking buying this. You know what I mean? Yes. Like why yes. would I buy this five hundred dollars system and support you guys if you're not going to give me something better than what I already fucking had or what the guy next door can get? You know what I mean? Like correct, correct. Yeah. And we're going to really see, you know, especially with, uh, at first, Assassin's Creed and Shadow of War, how it's going to look. Um, and, hey, if it looks phenomenal, which I have a feeling it's going to. Yeah, I mean, I've heard people who've had hands-on with it. They, they were saying it's looking really good. Oh, um, yeah. My thing is yeah. just, like, it's when I went from, you know, 8, 1080 to 4K, I was, like, I, like, had to look over. You know, I, I spent, like, $1,300 on my TV, and I had to look over to my wife, and I'm, like, uh, yeah, I definitely see a difference. You know what I mean? It's like, right. it's like, ah, oh, shit, I don't. So I don't know if I'm going to see a difference, <laughs> but and, and, and jumping back kind of the, cause I guess we'll just title this the Xbox one X episode, but, uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah. So like, cause I don't know what to fucking call it, but, uh, I, I can't believe it's smaller than the S. I, I just can't yes. believe it. Like, because the S is already so small. I'm yep. like, I feel like I'm going to pick it up and it's going to be like my cell phone. I'm like, Oh, here's my Xbox. Like, I, I don't <laughs> understand how, how it's going to be smaller, but Right, exactly. I'm super exactly. pumped for it. Um, I, I will say I have not pre-ordered one. Uh, GameStop should have pre-orders still, so I'm gonna put fifty dollars on one at GameStop. But I'm gonna walk into Walmart and try to buy it because I get my discount at Walmart because my wife works oh, at Walmart. Um, lucky. But my whole thing is like, I, I'm on the fence. Like, if I have, if this system will not be available because I didn't pre-order it, I may not buy it just because oh. that's upsetting to me. It's like it's if if you know what I mean. Like it's just it's a little yeah. weird, but. I don't know. I may just fucking. I probably honestly. I say that, and then I'm probably just gonna go to GameStop and pay it off because I'll probably play, pay with my trade. But right, I don't right. Know. I think I'm gonna pick it up as soon as I can. But there is a part of me that wants to wait a little bit, only because Xbox has been coming out with some great bundles. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and I just I keep thinking in my head, man. Crackdown Three, Sea of Thieves is coming out in the springtime. Oh, they're gonna have a Crackdown bundle, no can doubt. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a bundle and just get a free game with it? Yeah, it'll be price? well. It, it'll be fifty dollars uh, more. It'll be a I, I, quote me on this. It'll be a white Xbox One X, oh, and it'll come with Crackdown for fifty dollars more. 
Oh, now I want to wait. Thanks yeah. a lot. I know. I know it. <laughs> you, 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 someone needs to clip this, and we just need to save this. And when it fucking happens, I can start mm-hmm. collecting my check from Microsoft because yes. royalties. I mean, I came up with that first. I mean, you know they're listening. I mean, Phil Spencer's in the chat right yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, that's that's obviously. who Abysmal Zombie is, actually. That's yeah, Abysmal. obviously. Yeah, Abys- Oh, hey, Phil. How you doing? Yeah, exactly. AKA, AKA Abysmal. Yeah. Yeah, no, totally. <laughs> oh. I'm telling you, if they do custom like they do with the design. That lab, would be oh, insane. That oh, would be insane. Oh, make, I think they'd make so much money. But um, I, so fingers crossed. Again, as an Xbox fan, I, I try not to go into fanboy territory, but... I do like Xbox. I really do. Um, I want this to be successful. Um, I, I want. I st- I want the Pro to be successful. Um, even though, to be honest, I've been using my PlayStation basically for PlayStation View and watching TV. I haven't really played many games, um, unfortunately. But um, I'm sure that will change soon as more games come out. Um, but man, it's just I keep thinking about how this year has been with games. And the Switch is success, and now if we can just have the Xbox One X be successful, I mean, it's going to be a, a year to remember in yeah. gaming. So that's what, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, that's, yeah, that was kind of that, that was kind of it. I mean, we could probably go on for longer, but we've been already going <laughs> long in this podcast. So kind of our ending stuff. Um, so you can, so we're going to be doing an extra live stream. Uh, we have no, nothing set yet. <laughs> but uh, I know we're going to do a Game Octane one. Uh, it's going to be on yes. the Game Octane channel. Um, I know Jason's probably going to jump on. Um, I'll probably jump on. Uh, Real Deal will probably jump on. Uh, f- you're totally fucking invited if you want. Um, so, Ryan, if you want to play, definitely well, feel I mean, free. I, I have Life or uh, oh, what's it called The Last of Us. Okay. I haven't played it yet. That would be so, that would be a fun playthrough to watch you play last right, of us. Right, right. That would be kind of fun. So just depending on time and. But yeah, so we're gonna try to schedule something where we can all play. But I know me personally, uh, I'm gonna do a twenty. I always do a twenty-five hour stream. Uh, my buddy usually comes up from Fort Wayne. Um, we hang out. Uh, I, I don't get to see him very much, so it's kind of like a, a thing we do every year. But uh, nice. so I always make a big plan, and we always do like a huge long stream. We are thinking about maybe uh, hauling up his PC, and I might we might just do like twenty-five hours of Divinity Two. Um, we might not because that game, I love that game, but that game gets very monotonous for me because I'm just like, I want to kill things. And he's like, no, we got to talk to people. I was like, no, let me fucking kill him. But, um, but we always try to do something. So either that or we'll figure something out. Um, I don't know when we'll do it though. Uh, ex- yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're kind of, th- I mean, thinking mid November, um, we have, you know, we'll have some games to give away during the stream, which is going to be kind of nice. Yeah. I just got more um, to give away. So <laughs> oh, humble bun. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, we got. We just have some games that we've been wanting to give away, and it might be a good time just during charity. Just yeah, definitely. Just extra life to do it. Um, but we'll keep you guys updated. So stick to, you know, keep an eye on Game Octane's social media, Facebook, Twitter, the website as yeah, well. Yeah, our Discord's um, down below, chat. Um, yes. Definitely jump in our Discord. You can hang out with us, play games with us. I'm always trying to play something, and I'm always trying to find people to play shit with, so definitely jump in there. Um, we'll love to see you in Discord. Um, but... F- for that, I guess we're, we're basically just wrapping it up. Um, where can people yeah. find you on the internet, Ryan? Uh, so I'm on Facebook. I am on Twitter. Uh, Rye Welch 6 is what I am on Twitter. Um, been fun. Been a while. I got, you know, real busy. It's been fun being a guest. And, yeah, definitely. Uh, hanging out with you. Yeah, it was great having games you. Games and stuff. Um, but again, I'm on Xbox. I'm also on PlayStation. Um, like Matt, I've been on xbox a little bit more yeah. than i have on the playstation but dude just send me a message send me a friend request i'd love to play some games with you definitely yeah and you can find me on twitter uh and it's, it's basically the same as my twitch name at, uh it's 16 underscore bit bear mm-hmm. um, i'm on just follow me there on twitter i interact a lot on twitter i'm on twitter almost 24 7 um i like it so just follow me on there and then we'll figure out stuff or jump in our discord uh, i'm 16 bit bear there i'm 16 bit bear on xbox live I'm whatever. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Um, We love you. Yes, we do. You're all cute. Oh, yeah. Okay. Bunch of cute people. All right. See.